Hello and welcome. It's Roller Wiener Monday. Here we are again with our wieners on Monday. And that is great because they're still on sale, which I think is wonderful. It's good to see everybody here. I hope everybody's doing good and has been safe this week. What's happening? Well, the FMCSA, unbelievably, is going to test this three-hour off-duty break, which we could talk about. You can have a period between 30 and minutes and three hours let's talk about what you really have to do though because there's a one special rule that you're gonna love little america is booting trucks off the fool fool the fool island you fools on the fuel island finally finally trucks you can't sit there you're gonna get the boot you're gonna get the hook and you're gonna get a bill finally i have the top 10 private carriers by number of trucks uh, do you know what the top 10 private carriers are in the United States by number of trucks? That just came out. Don't forget road checks coming up here very shortly. I have some interesting rates and also, of course, stock news as usual from your stock expert, me. Because no one knows more about stocks than me. So says I. Uh, that would not be true at all. And that would be... Uh, not listening to me would probably be the best advice ever for that kind of thing. Today, uh, well, the other day, uh, Michael Muller was first, but today I had Big Nate Jobber first today. So uh, congratulations to you there. It's a good to see you. I'm sorry that you're not making a lot of money there. Aviator Trucker, what's going on? Uh, Christina Jones, hello. Oh, Night Ranger. <laughs> good morning. You've never been number two. That's awesome. Uh, Sister Christian was number one for a while. I do know that. Hello, GP Transco is here. Oh, let's see. Good morning from Garland, Texas. Donovan, what's going on out there? Air Gunner Bob, motor carrier officers are hammering trucks on uh, I-70 in Ohio. Great. Off I-75. Oh, uh, wonderful. Captain Flatbed, hello from Half Moon Bay. Wow. What's happening up there? Yikes. The Who Won't Get Fooled Again. I used to crank that song in the evening to keep me moving and make your pickups. George Wilson. All right. I listened to a podcast, and there's a trucking podcast. Uh, Planet Money did one about leasing. So if you listen to podcasts, Planet Money just did one uh, very recently about truck leasing and Prime. So I think that's pretty interesting. You should go check that out. Planet Money podcast. Mm -hmm. The Flip Flop Fool's here. Hello there. <laughs> Captain Flatbed dislikes California, don't we all? If not for the weather, there'd be no point in having it. Trucker Hershey, hello. Dave Johnson, the suspense. <laughs> it's killing me too. I'm waiting. I sit there and wait for the time. Oh, let's see. Hello from New Mexico, Nomad Trucker. Hello there. What cars did we look at this week? Luke, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you know, I was out looking at that uh, Kia again, but uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm getting tires for my Sonic, so we're going to keep that. So had a little issue, as we saw on Sunday with my Escape. Uh, death proof roller wieners are tingling. Oh, that's, uh, that's weird. May want to get somebody to check that out, Alexander. We'll see you shortly with after your phone call. Uh, good afternoon, Kenworth Ryder, Captain Flatbed. Yeah, what's uh, well on the quote, Timeless Trucker Hershey? Yeah, I know. I love to bring out the uh, quotes like that. Uh, they they never seem to go out of style, that quote, certainly, by Democrat Robert Kennedy. So, uh, Christopher Van Dyke. Hello from Southside Chicago and Stager. Southside. All right. What's happening, Southside? I was so Southside, I grew up in Lansing for a while, Lansing, Illinois. Gear Jammer, greetings from Oklahoma City. What's going on? Alexander, I'm doing good here. I hope you're doing good. You're the one with the phone call that I'm waiting to hear about if you uh, want to tell us. Uh, let's see. So, uh, I, <laughs> you'll always be number two in my book. Hello, Roger Penske. Randy Halo, what's going on? Greetings from Southgate, LA. All right, Roger Penske. That's great. It's getting cooler out, by the way. But get ready for that. While Bill's here, hello, he's going to leave. We'll watch the rerun. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. It's good to see you. Al John, say yes. This is, you made it. What's happening? Cassius King Trucking is here. Let's see here. Captain Flatbed is running. Just docked, waiting uh, to get unloaded. Trucker Hershey, where are we unloading this time? Holy mackerel, you were, you're all over the place there. Kevin, Kevin made it. Good. Donkey bite. Uh, do you mean cattle? <laughs> yes, that's the, that'd be the only kind of stock that you should take advice from me about. Fleet Nav Systems is here. Don't forget their show coming up tomorrow has Trooper Hoover on it. So you're going to want to see that show. 
live at uh, 3 p.m., right? We're still doing 3 p.m.? All right, Jerry Albano, uh, GM from Alabama Company this week, has hands in the cookie jar. All of them, it seems like. George Costanza retracted, not that there's anything wrong with it. Precision Logistics, hello. Paul Harris, they just finished Cash is King. Yeah, I know, he's all over the place. He already did six shows today. FMCSA is making a career out of this uh, hours of service. I know this uh, this new thing is going to be a real problem, and there's a big catch to it. This is what everybody wanted in the uh, changeover, which is coming at the end of next month, right, in less than four weeks or about four weeks. But there's a big catch. If you want the three-hour break, there's a catch. There's always a catch, isn't there? There's always a catch. It's never just that easy. Robert Daniel, hello there. Ryan, uh, let's see. So if all trucks and the fuel line have booted, how we get fuel? Here's the thing. Little America. I love this. I read an article about this. And then they interviewed uh, some manager out there or whatever at Little America. Trucks, of course, as we know, sit there at the fuel line. Some of them don't even buy fuel. They're getting a 30-minute break or whatever. They said, no way. They're going to boot you and tow you. Fill up and get the heck out of the way. It's so aggravating. I cannot believe how aggravating it is. I'm so for it. Boot everybody out of there. And I did think that too. I'm like, why are they going to boot it? They should just have a tow truck sitting there. It's just why boot the truck and then get the tow truck. But that's what they said. Greg Lee, good morning from Jefferson City in the middle of a thunderstorm. Oh, finally. Wish it would rain over here somewhere. Some uh, just did just got here. Did I miss who you drive for? Hot shot? No, you didn't. <laughs> we didn't miss that. George Costanza, I've lost, uh, okay. AC went out in the truck as I crossed from Tennessee to Mississippi. Oh, well, fortunately, it's winter and cool there. They found a Freightliner dealership, uh, split off your kid, and put me up in a hotel. <laughs> split off your kid? What are they doing? The Holiday Inn for the weekend without an issue. That's good, other than uh, uh, what's happening with your kid. Good, f good morning from Myrtle Point, Oregon, Kelly. Wow. Not all companies do that. That's true. Some would tell you too bad, sit in the truck or whatever. Look, other than what they're doing to your kid, that's not bad. TJ Jones, good morning. Uh, Cassius King Trucking. Swift driver takes a Western Express mirror off with a pinned back trailer. L love it. I thought we were going to have a flip-flop fight. Oh, that would have been something. Uh, please, watch what you're doing. You know, it's just, this kind of stuff shouldn't even happen. These low-speed accidents. Precision Logistics, hello from Pennsylvania. That's what most companies have, by the way, they said. Oh, most of our accidents are low-speed accidents. So, Todd McGuire, American Service Line, 60 cents detention as soon as you bump the dock, private carrier. Nice. That's pretty good if they uh, pay it at uh, W-2. Kyle caught another live stream. I appreciate it. Nittany Mike, hello there. Steve RT, are you getting spoiled by the new Explorer? No, I actually don't like that car, really. I wouldn't buy it. This one's an XLT for those of you that didn't see my show yesterday. Show. My uh, video yesterday. Um, <laughs> my, my Escape, uh, which is 11 months old, is in the shop getting an engine put in it. So my dealer is nice to customers and they give you a loaner car, which is not required by the warranty. Keep that in mind. And so I'm in an Explorer, which um, is only an XLT, which is like the base model right now. The seats, not great. I think you're going to need to upgrade for the seats. So uh, not that impressed with it. Gets good mods on the highway, 31 or so. I mean, the switches aren't placed right. They've overthought a lot of stuff. You press a button on the air conditioning and it pops up on, pop up on the screen. So you have to look at it rather than just being able to change the direction. There's a lot of uh, issues that I would change. Uh, I like the LED headlights, although in the wintertime they'll be frozen over. I wouldn't buy it. And it's just huge. It's just gigantic parking at parking places. So uh, not that impressed with it, no. Uh, let's see. Uh, Luke, uh, are you in Navarre, Ohio? See a Ford Escape and Chevy Sonic Park? <laughs> yeah, that'd be something. The Sonic gets tires put on it tomorrow. That's going to be exciting. GP Transco signing our first Kenworth T680. The team drivers, those things look great. Oh, really? I haven't seen any of those. I did see a white Freightliner for you on Friday. So uh, that was something, a white one. I thought, oh, GP Transco, and it was one of the white trailers with the kind of a new design. I thought, I wonder if that's an owner-operator, but I thought maybe it's a company driver in a white truck. Kind of excited about the uh, fall. Yeah, finally, finally. Greetings from Rise. Oh, nice. I was just there earlier today visiting. Had a little fly around. Melrose Park, then pick up heading to Fargo. Wow, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm going to be about getting out of that Fargo here in the next month or two, though, right? Let's see what we can do about heading south. Hell, John, to tooling around Gulfport, getting tags and your twick. All right. Get set. Where are you going to end up? 
We've okay, good. Fleet Nav Systems is confirmed with Trooper Hoover. Please send your questions to me if you want to put them in the lineup. Yeah, well, they're gonna have Trooper Hoover on the show tomorrow, so uh, that's gonna be great. Talking to him, get all your questions answered by an actual trooper. Let's see if I can find it right there. It is, and he'll be on tomorrow's show. All right, Trooper Hoover, they return triumphantly uh, with an officer on there. So get your questions ready for Trooper Hoover. It's always a good show. I'll take a Western Star. Yeah, when are we going to get some Western Stars over there? They couldn't be that much more money. We we're back. We're filming in Denver last time the show was going on. GP Transco. Oh, fancy. Filming in Denver. Wow. Do you, are you going to open a Denver terminal or do you have one in Denver? I don't know if you do. Jerry, uh, thank you. Good follow up. I appreciate that. Uh, nice congrats on the T680s. Good rigs. Are those going to have the pack our engine in them or what are they doing? How are those going to be set up? I'm just curious. Split, oh, you split off the load. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, why were, uh, why are they taking your kid? You can go to a motel, but we have to take your, keep your kid so we know you'll come back. So, uh, donkey biting a flip-flop fight. I bet the one who has the scariest toenails. The guy who's clicking across the parking lot, that's the guy you want to watch out for. That darn 7,000, uh, 7.7 engine rebuild. Can't believe you got that so soon. I know, Fleet Nav. Uh, the, actually, it's 7,007 miles. So it just turned 7,000 miles. So they had his engine, and it's not going to be a rebuild. They're taking the engine out. There's a crate engine sitting there. I saw it. They're waiting for all the extra parts. They come separately, but it's a long block, full, full engine. They just replace, they just take these out, he said, because Ford wants them back to check them out, and that'll get a complete new engine put in it. So be a couple weeks on that, I assume. <laughs> Isn't that great? Cars are getting weird, that's for sure. I don't think they did a good job with the Explorer. I think they could do better. Oh, Kyle, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, where did this go off to? Uh, your truck driving the Explorer is too big. Yeah, I know. Well, look, I have a tiny car that I drive myself, and even the Escape is not that big. I think this Explorer is just way big. Getting in it is difficult. It doesn't have running boards on it, so you got to kind of step up into it. And um, I don't know. I just don't like it. The seat, the seats, look, you got to upgrade for the seats. These seats are not going to cut it. Just, uh, you know, going the few hundred miles I've put on it? No. So that's for sure. And the sticker, I have this, I have the window sticker of this thing. It's around $46,000 <laughs> for this one because it's going to be somebody's new car when, uh, you know, when they go to sell it. So we're looking, GP Transco is looking into getting Western Stars for drivers the most miles next year as a thank you. Oh, that's great. You know, I always thought maybe somebody with like a million miles, at a million miles, they can choose... Uh, some interior stuff in the truck. They should get a sticker, of course, on the side, their name and million safe miles, you know, a million miles with the company. That's a great kind of benefit to give a driver. Of course, then, they, then if they leave, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. GP Transcar, funny story. Our Freightliner dealership messed up and delivered 10 new Cascades to us in white. Oh, but we kept them. That's probably one of them. Oh, okay. So it's set up exactly the same, just in white. So it would have been teal, but it was a white one. So you have 10 and that's the one I get to see. And then there's not a conspiracy there to not send the teal trucks to Indiana. Okay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Alexander is two pickups in Chicago. Then you're headed to Carroll, Iowa. I got my tanker endorsement. All right. So you're getting set uh, to do even more stuff. Sometimes though in a reefer, you get those big tubs and stuff and they want a tanker endorsement. So George Costanza, serious question. <laughs> okay. Unlike most, right? Why do people lease when used trucks are under six years old or 500 miles, 500,000 or 50 grand? Leasing makes zero sense from a business standpoint. Well, you can write the whole lease off. That's always what they tell you. But, um, you know, sometimes uh, people want a newer truck. Everything used is a risk. But then, of course, here's my new car in the shop. I guess anything new is a risk too, but at least it's covered under warranty. So it depends. Is the warranty worth it to you? It depends. The new one, theoretically, should last you longer, or you would hope, right? A GP Transco, are you mostly reefers? Hmm, no. GP Transco, we're in Denver because the next story of drivers is about this guy trucks and he lives in Denver. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. All right, then. Uh, maybe also new terminal coming there. Let's see what if we can get that happening. <laughs> the GP trailer I have right now does not say GP Transco anywhere on it. Well, this one had the, uh, the newer logo on it. It kind of matched the truck better, I thought, really. Uh, but I thought, oh, a white truck. How do they get a white truck over here? But no, okay, one of 10 company trucks. You know, a small, tiny percentage of the trucks, and that's the one I see. Nashville to Kenosha today, ramming speed. Oh, that's awesome. That's super awesome. Kenosha, you better get out of there before dark. 
There's going to be some peaceful protest there, I'm sure. Especially by the used car dealerships. There was a shortage of materials due to COVID, so some of the trailers are awkwardly naked. Oh, you couldn't get the stickers. Oh, I never thought about that. That's not something you can just print out on a home printer, probably. All these problems that uh, a company has, you don't even think of about. The trailer's four years old. I'm still waiting on my new Focus, Christina. Well, uh, I don't know where you found it. This dealer here, he's got basically no cars left. So if you want anything, you've got to get uh, basically an SUV here. I'm sure there's still some around. I kind of wish I had that. I got that new. I didn't have any problems. Two of them, no problems. You guys are here in Illinois, correct? Hey, good to see you, Christina. Let's see. If, go Badgers. Go Badgers. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about sports. Is that some kind of hockey team? We are everywhere besides Florida and Georgia, right? I heard the new Western Stars are having all kinds of electrical issues. Nice. <laughs> Too much downtime and not enough money in the pocket. As long as, yeah, if you're not being paid for that downtime, that could be a problem. The new Western Stars look pretty and are comfortable. I'd try one out. I think it would be great, though, if, to have it as a company truck. Of course, the problem at a place, you had GP Trans to get a fuel bonus. So, oh, you're going to get, I don't know if that would get just as good a fuel mod. So, I'd have to really think that through. West, will Western Express have a decal for 1 million DUIs? <laughs> they have 1 million uh, safe mile decals. They just haven't anybody get one yet. 1 million D we've just got our 1 million DUI you know that I can imagine that place where it's got those signs that say we've gone this many days without an accident it's probably digital there so it's just as soon as it clicks the one it goes right back to zero and it's in minutes pretty much a fancy version of the Freightliner but they look better coach just bought a 2016 with 600,000 for 30,000 see that's a bargain that's pretty good money that's less than a car that's less than this Explorer that I'm driving Jerry, come to Al Alabama. I will feed you some chicken and watermelon for doing a great job. I'd appreciate that. That be sounds delicious, by the way. And I know they're fresh right now because they're picking them all up here in Indiana. So I know Cash King Trucking had some watermelon issues last year with loads. Well, they are school bus after school bus full of them down in uh, southern Indiana. Flip Flop Foods has got a 2021 Freightliner getting used to the automatic. Oh, your first automatic? Don't you love it? You will get used to it, and you won't have any problems with it. Meaning driving it. Good morning, Marco Hernandez from sunny Arizona. Hopefully the DOT changed speed limit in California. Never going to happen, they've, they've said. Also, driving rigs with flip flops should be illegal. Look, walking around the truck stop with them should be illegal. But uh, I don't know about changing the law. They they just will not get that passed in California. That'll be the last state at 55, you know, for where it's like, oh, 40, the last 40 years, you know. Paul Vines is here. Hello. Highway Freak Main, it, uh, the connection is not good in Tracy, California. Well, why not? It's like the tech capital of the world in California. They should have 5G everywhere, right? George Costanza, my point about the lease is this. If you don't have the discipline to save 25000 put down in a new truck, or you don't have the credit to finance a truck, you should not lease. Oh, that's true. Look, the leases, which most of them are trying to be perpetrated by companies like Prime, which they talk about in that Planet Money podcast, and a lot of these companies, and they'll that's they get some new people into that. They'll take you right out and go, oh, look, you can get this brand new truck, you know, be a your own boss right away, and this truck is your truck and everything. Yeah, no way. Right. I totally agree. Hello from Ohio. Need to listen to the song on YouTube, Tanker Yanker by Bill Weaver. All right, we'll check that out. Nothing against drivers from Florida and Georgia. We just don't have a whole lot of freight going that way, and it's hard to get them home for GP Transki. If there's nothing going in, then you're going to be out for, do you mind being out for six months? Every time I'm in California, I'm driving faster than the speed limit, it seems like. That's every truck, basically. It's hard to go 55 there. It's so boring, but that's what they do, and it's easy for them to write tickets. George Costanza, you were 100% correct yet again i'm just going to run down the rolex store to do some peaceful protesting <laughs> King, yeah it's across from the apple store you can do the peaceful protesting how do you check your deck you go to higherright.com one word higherright.com and right on there in that page it says uh how to get your deck you want to copy your free copy of your deck click it and fill it out and uh you get a free copy of your deck stan dodge rolling through hello there it's good to see you kyle GP transfer doesn't sound like a good outfit in the future. You'll have to work your way to it. All right. Selective. Uh, they're selective there. Keep a good record to get in. Delivery is right behind the dealership. Uh, <laughs> speed. Oh, that's going to be great. 
That's going to be great. Are you hopefully are you going to be there during the day? Roger Penske, when uh, you get to mile marker 87, get in the left lane and check out where I get blown off the road. Oh, are your marks still on the road? Do they have a plaque up for you? We will be here when you're ready. A GP Transco, one year of experience, three years, no accidents, and seven years of clean criminal history. All right. Yeah, so uh, they're particular there. So, But that should be everywhere, really. Keep a clean record. And they actually were talking about truck drivers in an article. Only 23% of drivers have ever had a moving violation, which I'm surprised. I'm kind of actually surprised about. So seven over three-fourths of drivers have never had a moving violation. So that's pretty surprising to me. I thought it, I just kind of thought it would be more, considering how much Owida, especially gripes about speed traps and everything. Jeez. Imperials NYC, hello. You're sorry you're late. I appreciate you coming in at any time. Aviator Trucker 100 Florida, there's no freight to get their trucks out. Yeah, you can get in and you can't get out. Get a load down there for three bucks and get out for 13 cents. Tracy, California, P. Soup Anderson in Bluton. Hmm. Do you ever think we'll go back to paper logs, Wes Rogers? No way. That will never happen because you can't be tracked on a paper log. So they want this the whole thing for tracking. So there is no way you're going to go back to paper logs. Eventually, I think eventually in the future, they'll say you just have to do an e-log. Even an old truck, they're just going to say tough. You're just not going to be able to drive it. It's just not going to be acceptable to drive it. Uh, so I can see that day in the future. Some people who scam into them now kind of by keeping an old truck or whatever. I think, you know, next 10 years, they'll say no. Everybody's got to have them. Because they're already setting up sensors where you can drive. When you're driving at a scale, it transmits all your e-log information to them as well. GP Trans, does anyone drive with Millis? Curious to hear how they are doing and what it's like to drive for them. Now they're owned by Heartland. Yeah, did they change at all? They said, oh, we're going to keep everything the same. You know, there'll be two separate places that keep them the same. So I wondered, did anybody from Heartland just transfer to Millis? Because it would seem like you're almost intercompany transferring, you know, staying in your same company, but getting more money. California is stupid, George Costanza, that's dry. They'll let a dually pull a 30-foot camp with a car, and they can roll 75. What's more dangerous, that or a Western Express driver? Well, there's a, that is the point of the week, right. We could uh, go to Florida, but most people don't want to be out a month. That is a long time, depending. Fleet Nav, I wish I had my Longhorns mounted on my hood. You're going to need them going over there. All vehicles towing are supposed to be 55. I don't think they look at cars as much, though. And certainly, like, if you have a motor home, so you can be 87 years old, rent a motor home that's gigantic, and run that. Or is there some kind of speed limit at a weight? You know, say a single motor home not pulling anything. California will never change. They're not talking about lowering the speed limit for four-wheelers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> People will have a heart attack. Of course, they won't slow down. They'll just get to write more tickets. Do you mean more dangerous than Swift drivers? That's the thing. Swift, there's so many trucks, they're going to have more accidents. We try not to talk badly about any carriers. Just curious if Millis is a good place to work. We know it used to be. I had a lot of people go over there when they were just still Millis and liked the starting deal out because it paid a lot more than a lot of the mega places that start out were low 30s and Millis was like low 40s to start, which is, you know, 10 cents is considerable for your first year. If you don't get a ticket every now and again, you're not trying hard enough. I'm really surprised. You know, I guess I just thought drivers got more tickets because it seems like every, almost every driver I know personally has gotten a ticket or two. And to say that only, you know, 23% of drivers have ever gotten a moving violation. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know how they, they just only ask 10 people. They must only ask KLLM drivers. They don't have time to stop for tickets. Busted Wallet Garage. This weekend pulled a camper from Utah to Tennessee. 1,600 miles, 25 hours. How illegal for CDL? Uh, not legal. <laughs> Very legal, but if you pulled it yourself, legal. How, that's somewhat ironic as well. You could get in your car and do that. That's no problem. A truck, not going to happen. Trucker Hershey talked to a military driver a month ago. After the change, he said nothing changed, but it was early. I wondered if at December 31st last year anything would change. It didn't yet. Oh, and I love it. Uh, uh, an astute viewer sent a picture, which I don't have up here, but of a Celadon tractor and trailer together. It's a Taylor trailer, but it's on a Celadon truck. Still parked at a truck stop. No new IFTA on it. It's still got a pre-pass in it. Okay, what is going on? 
why did the company that's selling these not put out some kind of bounty, a couple hundred bucks, hundred bucks to say, if you tell us where a truck is and we find it, we give you some money. It's crazy. So there's a tractor. It was an international, but still, it's still just sitting there. No soup for California. Andrew Hurricane, what are the odds that the ATA gets uh, alum gets named the next FMCSA administrator? I'm sure what's his face over there is looking at that, whose uh, name I can't think of at the moment. Yeah. He's like, oh, I, I'm not free. I could go do that. George Costanza drives for Werner. They got me into my hotel over the weekend and paid my breakdown pay. That's good. I'd rather be driving, but they didn't hesitate to get your air fixed. I've heard of companies that wouldn't. That's true. Yeah, some companies would say, well, next time you come through, the terminal will fix it. How about that? Next time you're through here, we'll just fix it then. So don't worry about it. Just keep on going and just roll your windows down. Jeanette, if cash is king, if no one is flipping you the bird, you're not working hard enough. That's better. Last week, did you talk about UPS in Southern Oregon driving on I-5 shooting cars? No, I didn't. But uh, there was a UPS driver who has been arrested for apparently being a mass murderer, basically, or serial type killer by driving down the interstate and uh, shooting at people. So, of course, UPS didn't have anything to do with that. I happen to be a UPS driver. They're cooperating. Just, uh, it was a weird thing, right? You don't hear about that much, certainly. But that's true. That happened a while ago. Bubba, your driver's license is your ticket to prosperity. If you get a speeding ticket or violation, you're hosing yourself. I agree. I agree. Stan Dodge, your pick uh, was your picture. Okay, right. Yeah, I didn't get up on here, but... That's amazing that there's a sell it on tractor and trailer. I've seen some trailers. Nobody sent me a tractor picture in a while. But for a tractor to still be sitting there, that's ridiculous. Somebody needs to go just tow it away or something. I can't believe the truck stop let it sit there all this time. Hotshot veteran, I kept creeping up speed every time I was in California until I got stopped at 73. Got off with a warning. Wow. Doing 55 and getting passed all day. I'm sure. Yeah, going 55, 57 there. Everybody, everybody passes you. I wish we could get Scottish trucker Tommy on the show. All right. Hot shot, uh, just do 65. That'd be, I wouldn't push 65 out there. California has never been trucker friendly. I think they should have to drop terminals in adjacent state and let them the use the electric, the electric trucks. Companies spend, uh, just spend money for uh, California compliance. I know. I don't know why they do it, but they, it must make out to them. They must make enough money on it or they wouldn't do it because otherwise companies would say, no, it isn't worth it. They don't, companies don't do stuff for free, you know. The FMCSA wants to change the break again. And what they're going to do, they're doing a study. They're just starting it. So here's what they're proposing. They haven't even gotten this other thing, but here's what they're proposing for the future. That you be able to take one break during the day that is between 30 minutes and three hours off duty your choice any amount of time in between there is fine one time but after that you have to take a 10 hour break for your next break you can't then split sleeper that so if you take like an hour break then you're done with split sleepering until you get 10 hours off but but it's not going to be just as easy as that companies can sign up to participate in the trial all right so your company's got to have a satisfactory safety record you know, that kind of thing. They can't have more out of services than that national average. But also, and they're in here, the company must have or install a driver video monitoring system. That's how they get you. You want your three hours? You take your camera. Because I don't know the number of people that write in and say that. Oh, wow, I wish I could have that three hour that they talked about. Well, it comes with a camera. Do you want it now? That's how they're going to do it. And believe me, I'm sure carriers will sign up for it. I saw a sell-it on trail this week. Wondered if he bought it. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, yeah, wouldn't you paint it, though? Would you just leave sell it on it? They're letting that sell down truck sit because there's no one to build. I think it looked like it was just sitting in a parking spot. It's not in a uh, paid spot or anything. I don't think it didn't look like it was. It's just sitting in a parking spot. The court was selling these though, around the country, so they should go uh, try to grab as many as they can. The truck's got to be worth something, even though it's an international. It's got to be worth a couple of hundred bucks at least. There's going to be somebody to buy it. A lot of companies put their terminals in Phoenix just to service the Southern California area. They should just make the companies come to Yuma to get their stuff. What are the top 10 carriers? Well, what does everybody think the top 10 carriers? Uh, what's the number, you know, any of these top 10 carriers in the number of trucks? 
you know, like what's the largest private? These are private carriers by number of tractors, not com not total trucks, tractors, right? That's how it was listed in the um, Transport Topics Top 100. So uh, let's uh, people think about that. Alexandra, oncologist told me scans came back clean, no cancer. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's what we want to hear. Keep that up. Holy mackerel. That's got to be some good news for you. I can't imagine making that phone call, how nervous I'd be. Roger Penske, I have no problem at 65, four years with lots of miles. I see trucks do it. I just wouldn't do it. I'm just too nervous to do it. Donkey bite, no AC in a vehicle with a pet can get you in jail. Human wait till the end of the week and swing by the shop. Yeah, oh, they don't care about you. They don't care about you. And, you know, that's just how, that's how they are. They don't care. Who cares? Who cares? Jerry Celadon has no money to get the truck. They dump me uh, work for Celadon. Jerry from Alabama. Paul is broke. Mark, CEO is <laughs> Mark. I'm a, I am on food stamps. People do know that, but they don't have money to get the truck. They have to, though, because they paid their CEOs and some upper level people a bonus. And uh, they have to be able to recover the equipment because the cost to get it is way less than it would bring at an auction. That's an international. It didn't look very old. It's going to get what 30 grand at auction 25,000 it's only going to cost them they don't have to fly a driver out and drive it back a couple of thousand bucks at the most that's all they'd have to do they can put a temporary permit thing in it and drive it back no problem uh george Costanza, you're going to go back to doing things to consider i'd love to see more videos of company warning new drivers away from bad carriers yeah that there's all there's all these smaller carriers that i can't find anything out about so if anybody has that kind of information, it's hard to find out about companies. They're just not forthcoming. What do you think about Hendrickson? What do people here think about Hendrickson? Is there anybody here from Hendrickson? Meanwhile, the cat will wait for Hendrickson information. Nigma will wait for the Hendrickson. That is the fluffiest cat, I swear. Let's see, a steel horse hot dog, right? I thought, I thought I saw a couple sell it on trails not very long ago. Yeah, I'm sure you did. They're around. But this is the first tractor I've seen in quite a while. Going to have to take off in the next 15 minutes. Catching up from being off last week. Fleet Nav Systems. Yeah, well, you know, Bahamas vacation. And you come back and you're working all slow and everything. I get it. Uh, kitties, Alexander Wright. There, there it was, too. George Costanza. Of course, uh, as I knock things around here, if you wear it, make it a parrot right while well, i knock the, everything over so uh, there we go with that always and let's see here fleet nav system don't forget to see them tomorrow right tomorrow trooper hoover is going to be there september 1st that's tomorrow on their live show he's there to live to answer questions pretty interesting so uh be sure to go talk to him and let's see here cash is king trucking is here today and live all, all the time you're right of course and GP Transco is here, too. There's some teal trucks, and I never get to see. I'll always join the teal revolution. I made that up, as you can tell. And let's see here. A beer break? <laughs> that won't be happening. People don't notice I've never had a beer. How about that? There's an interesting uh, fact about Mark. If I'm ever a, Je a Jeopardy question. Uh, 13. The number of beers Mark has never drank. All right. The truck stop won't do it because they have to eat the bill because they're bankrupt. Cri the critic. No, the truck stop. Oh, well, that's true. Where would they tow it off to? Because they know they would never get any money for it. But leaving it sit there, taking away a spot where people could spend money. So um, I don't know what they do with it. Walmart has got to be one of the biggest private carriers. Uh, Cisco is up there. Yes, Walmart is number three, 7,400 trucks. Cisco is number two at 8,745 trucks. How about that? So, uh, beer break sounds good. I'll pass, unless it's Billy Beer. I might consider uh, getting into it for that. Millis is the same. The new trucks aren't as loaded as they used to be, but treatment is the same. Pay, home time, truck speed. Drivers with no safety users are still at 70. All right, so they are going to keep it the same, and that's good. So, what would be the advantage of people joining Heartland, then? I thought the tow trucking company would. Oh yeah, why didn't I think about that? The towing truck, the towing company could tow it and then sell it in 30 days, but they would have to tow it properly, meaning that the trucking it's parked in a spot that the petrol allows you to park in, so they can't just tow you away. They would have to put a notice, and then probably in some states they'd have to send a notice to the company if they know where it is and give them an opportunity to move it. So 
You can't just tow it because you think they're bankrupt. So there are things to go through. FMCSA proposed to eliminate exhaust fluid just fell on deaf ears. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. Yikes. So there's that. California goes with any vehicle. Three X's or more. Any Okay, 55. All right, so, well, okay, well, what about an RV? Some RVs have two axles. How about that? That'd be cool to see more things to consider videos. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah. Hen Hendrickson is owned by Prime. Oh, that's why we don't hear anything about them. Yeah, I know, Alex. You're right. We had to get it up there. Warehouse construction in West Phoenix is going bonkers. In the last year, the vacant blocks across from the legitimate Korean businessman's social club, poker room, and massage parlor were there. Well, I'll tell you, flats uh, are up to 228 and they said that right now, flat beds were to, okay, flat load to truck ratio is the highest it's been since July 21st, 2018. There's almost 40 loads per flatbed on the boards. That's what it said. The highest in years. So how about that? And the rates are going way up because of it. And it's almost a happy ending over a million square feet. Bahamas, if only. Well, what one of those islands, you know. Bora Bora. Kyle Rittenhouse is a hero. That's pretty good. You may, uh, that our driver that's going up there may see him. Sierra England buys 35 more tractors to help hold up company yards fence. <laughs> that's awesome. Crimson Caveman Hendrickson's are cool. My dad used to drive them. Crimson Caveman. I never uh, got to drive one. Solid on tractor was located in the Petra and Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So, but it's in a regular parking spot, right? It doesn't look like it's in a paid spot. It doesn't look like it. So it's just in a regular spot. They may not even know it's there. I mean, how often do they come out and walk the parking lot? Almost never. Join the peaceful teal protest. Exactly. Really never had a beer, Kyle. No, never had a beer. That is a fun fact about Mark. Whenever I get on Jeopardy. Do you ever have any fun? <laughs> Absolutely, right now. Jeanette, of course. I can't say I wish I never had a beer, but that's about it. Does Paul pay for dump Celadon? They can't get paid with Paul's food stamps. See how exactly. No booze and what is your favorite vice? Well, you know. Miami Vice. I do like Miami Vice. Alexandria had four beers at one meal when you were home. That's four more than I've had my whole life. Isn't that something? Old trucker sake from the 60s. Black Smoke Matters. Yeah, I haven't heard from those guys in a while. You know, where are those guys? The BSM uh, trucking guys? Okay, S. Isaacs. PFG, that is correct. PepsiCo, right? 10,950. 10,950. But I think actually PFG would be Performance Food Group. And uh, they are performance food group is number seven, but number one is PepsiCo. PepsiCo at 10,950 tractors. All right, so that's top three. That's the top three. Four is Halliburton. Who's number five? Halliburton, did you know they have 6,100 tractors? Crazy. Jeanette hates American beer, but loves margaritas. Hendrickson Sr. lived down the block from me, and he, Junior lived behind you. Mrs. H trained jumping horses. Nice. Her cousin Jim would come down from Minnesota every summer, and we used to get stoned together. Hey, you gotta keep, you gotta do something with the neighbors. No tow sticker. I know they would. There's a few things they would have to go through to tow it away. But I agree that maybe the tow company's like, well, we're never gonna get any money from it. It's just gonna sit forever. They would then have to go through get a uh, permit, get a uh, you know a title to it and stuff. I think they could though. Luke uh, doesn't drink. Your family has some alcoholism issues. I'm putting a stop to it. It ends with you. Cash is king trucking. So if I find one of those sell-out trucks sitting around, I'm going to borrow the steer tires off it. I couldn't believe it had tires and stuff still sitting on it. I thought, oh, I can't. And who's leaving the, the uh, pre-pass in it? I'm surprised some driver didn't uh, snag that out of there. I bet it's empty of fuel, too. Kenneth P., how's it going? My sin is a yard switcher is finally over. Too bad. What was the original supposed to be one week turned out to be eight? Now heading from Michigan to Brookshire, Texas, then to Laredo. Well, what did you think about it? Do you think that's a worthy, uh, you know, thing to do? Or do you prefer being on the road? George Costanza maxed out my final this weekend. Finished my GSCM 530 class with a 93. Trucking full time and doing school is so much fun. Yikes. You, you are somebody that has no time. Bubba, there's a time limit on how long you can park in a parking lot at a station. They have a tote. Any, they can't just have a tote anytime they want. And it has to be signed. It depends on the state. There's a lot of rules about 
where you can park and how long you can park there. If there's no sign to that pet door that don't say anything, then there's not necessarily a time limit. The state would regulate where the signs have to be, how tall they have to be, how you have to notify the person to move their vehicle and stuff like that. If they don't have that up there, it can sit there forever. And apparently this Petro in Carlisle, um, they don't care. If it's been, it's certainly been there since December, right? That's when the place all folded up into nothingness. Misty sees three axle tour buses flying through California. They don't stop them because there's too many people on there. They don't want to hold up the people going to Vegas or whatever, you know. So uh, that's certainly, they, they don't want to hold those people up. Performance Food Group is PFG, right? Top 10. Performance Food Group. Yeah, PFG is number seven. Number seven, a number of trucks. Crimson Caveman. I'm doing dedicated JB Hunt. Lots of home time, but the pay isn't great. Hmm. Looking for a decent over-the-road company? I can get in with not perfect record. GP Transco would probably reject you. Probably if it's not a very good record. Maybe in the future. Keep the record clean. And uh, maybe in the future. Some people just said they like Millis here, so we'll see about that. Jeanette got a ticket dismissed, took a picture of the RV next to me. Told the judge the <clears throat> officer only ticketed me because of out-of-state base plate. Yeah, because they don't think he'll come in. <clears throat> That was in California. Cherry, get the a good job, get the tires off the truck, then call Paul and STG Logistics. Well, you can call him now at uh, Roadrunner, right? Because now he's over there. Let's give him a call. It hasn't helped them, so I'm sure they're like, uh, yeah, talk to people, whoever you want. Comfortable man gives JB Hunt a failing grade for a bad company. What I hear from the local people just seems to vary by city. If you do in the intermodal. Some cities, people seem to love it there, and then some cities, they're not doing as good. So it just depends. Al John's never had a beer either, and never had one beer. I noticed that, right? I don't drink beer. I'm more of a meth guy. Cash King. Well, for all the stops you have, you're, uh, you need it just to stay awake because they don't sell these uh, the bumblebee things at the truck stop anymore. Whoops, thought I want a free kitty litter for Fuzzy Nugget. Oh, that'd be super great. I wish. I just had to go get a bunch of that here, too. What's up from Laramie, Wyoming? Sunny in 59. Oh, it's going to be nice this week. Uh, take uh, advantage of it. Maybe that salad on tractor should go to a museum. Yeah, it needs to go somewhere. Beers like potato chips, you can't have just one. I can have just none. Only made $20 an hour, even with some extra work. Did it pay overtime? <clears throat> Doesn't match 50 cents. I get a mile for back and forth to Texas. 1,600 miles each way. It depends. It depends. Did you get overtime doing the, doing the yard? And did you get to go home every day? 50 cents a mile, but you're out 24 hours a day. So your time at work, you divide out your time at work and see uh, which one. Been looking for local jobs in Florida. They all pay 45000 three-fourths are touch freight with no incentive to do so. Well, they should be hourly down there, right? Containers, containers out of the ports. So it would seem like Jacksonville and Miami would have tons of those. Captain Flatbed is unloaded, probably getting another load easily. New technology will soon be available. Newest device is the peaceful protester avoidance system. Steers you clear of danger. I wish. CDC admitted COVID uh, death count is fake. Fewer than 10,000 have died. Well, if that's not necessarily true. Fewer than 10,000 people have died only from that. <laughs> other, when you get it, it exacerbates other problems that you have. And so that's what they're saying. They're not saying only 10,000 people have died. We, I read the whole study, which was boring, believe me, because a number of people posted that. And what they said is only 10,000 people died with just that. Other people had other problems. They're fat or they had heart problems or whatever it said in there. And so it exacerbated those problems, and that's what caused them to die. The Celadon truck is an attraction at this point. I'd pay a dollar to see it, to go sit in it. Is this where a driver actually sat? Right. Now, John's been sober for 15 years. That's why... Delivering alcohol to liquor stores and restaurants is so funny. Yeah, that is something. As long as it all goes in the store, I guess you're okay. Parts truck. Yeah, look, couldn't somebody use all the parts off this international? Only 1,400 trucks, probably not on the list. No, uh, your place did not make it to the top 10 in the country. But uh, they're probably in the top 100. I didn't go through all 100, but I'm sure they're in that. Misty's back home this week looking for a new car. All right. Uh, I know where there's uh, an Explorer for sale because I'm driving it around. So I once applied to one company, got hired. Then they gave me the boot. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I'm surprised nobody has uh, stripped that down truck that truck down to the axle stand. I can't believe it's been sitting there all this time. Do drivers not realize? Wait a minute. 
That company's still not running. It's probably still idling. There's probably a driver in the petrol was taking a shower, still waiting for the load. They go, I haven't had anything on the Qualcomm in nine months. Mark, uh, gear jammer, I'm almost 58 and I've never had a beer or any other alcohol. I've never smoked a joint either, right? Never done that. Never been uh, with a hooker. Awesome either. Was never interested in any of it. Awesome. That's pretty awesome. Living the clean life. European beer rocks and torrents. All right. You know, ironically, somewhat ironically, as a kid, I had a huge beer can collection. So my grandfather, for a while, drove a garbage truck. After he retired from the police force, he drove a garbage truck. He actually got two pensions, which you could get then. And he would bring me all these beer cans home. And uh, I had, I don't know, hundreds of them. I tried to sell them on eBay uh, some years ago. Turns out they're not worth anything. Pennsylvania statute, uh, vehicles remained in the pro private property without the consent and control of the property. Well, but <laughs> see, now that's interesting. Without the consent. It was parked there with their consent because they say, everybody, come in here and park. So you aren't there without someone's consent. It's not like I drive to your house in Pennsylvania and park in your driveway. And then you go, well, it's been here without my consent. The Petro allows the allows trucks to park there. So they have consent to park. Now, now where does the law go on that? Steve, I got really drunk on beer the first time I ever drank it when you're 13. <laughs> I threw up. Haven't had one since. I'm 63 and a haul beer every day. No worries about me drinking the product. Yeah, so that was enough beer for you. You had a lifetime worth of it. Aviator trucker, I once uh, drank beer on my break. I was stopped by a dyslexic officer. He gave me an IUD. Yikes. Uh, I hope he only handed it to you. Does Paul still the CEO of STG? Yeah, he's still over at C STG as well. Besides being on the board over there at Roadrunner. I mean, this guy's busy in trucking. I mean, who's going to be busier in trucking except the former CEO of Celadon? That's going to be a guy who's going to be in demand. And ironically, he is in demand. Fleet Nav is taking off. Have a good one. Tune into the live stream to ask Trooper Hoover questions uh, while well, they've got them here live. They'll be live tomorrow at 3 p.m. I hope to see everybody there. I'll also email Fleet Nav Systems to get your questions in early. Let's see here. Where did I go off to? Oh, Crimson Caveman, try Romar. I-55 and Kenzie in Chicago. Uh, do they? Is it W-2? That's the first thing I think of. Is it 1099? I'm in South Florida and they're hourly. So you kind of are getting paid an incentive to unload the truck. You're getting, because you, that's what I was waiting to see. You said you, there's no incentive to unload the truck, but you're getting paid to unload the truck because they're paying you by the hour. Where really drivers next to you and the other docks aren't getting paid anything. But the way the route is set up, you can tell you're not going to get overtime, but you're still on the clock. And if you're not going to get overtime, 40 hours a week is not a bad week, right? That's not bad. China virus, officially known as election infection. Oh, that's very good. That would do good on a bumper sticker, too. Maybe the engine is already gone, thus it's sitting in the same place. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, you look at it see, sitting really high in the front. Somebody was there taking the engine out of it. Cash is King Truck, and we'll be right back. You're going to run to McDonald's, get some chicken nuggets, coffee, and probably do a live feed in there. It was towed to a tow yard in Pennsylvania. It's just 20 days, but it has to be towed in there legally. Alexander, the company I pulled for is 400 trucks. I prefer medium companies personally. Yeah, 400 trucks is not going to make the top 100 list, certainly, of the 100 largest places, private companies. Is that place private? Maybe it is. Comfortable man, if I knew that Celadon driver that left the truck there, I'd buy him or steak dinner. You know somebody just left it, and I don't blame him. I'm not saying, oh, he shouldn't have left it. You had to leave it at that point, and he just left it there, and that was the end of it. Uh, I'm with JB Dedicated Home Every Night, a 19 Cascadia, 350 miles a day, stayed in beautiful Marquette last night, and today's Friday. JB treats me very well. Some people do really good at it, and then some people aren't. That place is super up and down, depending which th what city you run out of, and probably part of it is dispatch. Companies never realize how much a bad dispatcher can ruin uh, a large part of their company because drivers quit then, and it's the it's not the driver, it's the dispatcher. Misty, in your younger, wilder days, you did all the above. Now you're a good girl. Well, you've turned a corner on it. Alexandra, I've been with the hooker, smoked the green beer. The green, oh, beer, vodka, strippers, drag races. All right. And that was just last week. So awesome. No booze. This stream is full of squares. Hey, be there or be right. Are they checking the books at the STG where Paul is CEO? Uh, no, of course not. Not yet. And of course, uh, nothing was his fault. As he would say, not convicted of anything. Norman Bates is here. 
Sorry late you were bearing the hatchet with some friends. Oh, very good. Hope there's a room available. Sorry very punch nutty today. I need your caffeine fix. Someone needs to ask Trooper Hoover why you're so crazy. Look, this guy is, I will say, go. if you want to go over there, be nice to the trooper. He comes on to answer DOT and those kind of questions, you know, and it's a very informative show. I saw the last show, you know, I was on that show, very informative and a nice guy to come on and answer questions. So if there's some kind of DOT question that you want specifically answered, that would be a great way to get it answered from an officer. I was in Pennsylvania last week and killed three spotted lanternflies. Flip-flop fool. I hope you have that sticker on your truck about it. No shame in your game, but plenty of regrets. Uh, well, regrets, we've had a few, you know, but then again, you know, too few to mention. I'd be taking a big pay, uh, pay cut. Well, that's true, but is it a cut? See, I don't go necessarily for the money, but for the, is that the life that you want? How many, you know, how many hours a week do you want to be gone? That's what I'm saying. What fits your life? If that's not going to work for you, then... Don't, you know, money you can make in different ways, but time you can't get back from it. No matter how much money you make, you can't buy time back. So I'm asking if 40 hours a week, you get all those rest of those hours to do whatever you want. Because you're saying if they don't, if there's not going to be overtime, it's going to be 40 hours. I didn't do well, JB Hunt, Al Johns. That's the thing. Some people write in, oh, I'm making great. And then some people write in and nothing. There doesn't seem to be any in between there. People do great or not. How many trucks does in and out have? I don't know. We don't have one here. Well, my Fargo lug was sold to a company in Fargo, delivery to West, to <laughs> deliver to West Minneapolis. Yikes. They can't just cut off 600 miles of that load or however far it is. Steel Horse Pennsylvania stopped issuing the Lantern Fly sticker on your truck, but they're still issuing the Lantern Fly permit. Oh, well, too bad. <laughs> Trooper Hoover, why you be tripping? Why you be tripping, Trooper Hoover? You know, suddenly blocked. This your account has been blocked from our internet. Tr Christopher Robert Trucking, what's going on? A favorite man with the answers. I hope so. Got one for you. Yeah, give it to me. What's the show with the trooper? That's uh, Fleet Nav Systems, which is right there. Fleet Nav Systems, and he'll be on tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, live. Trooper Hoover tomorrow. They're also geotab experts, so if you guys have any geotab questions, but any DOT type of questions for the trooper, complicated questions, let him answer your complicated question on the show. Yeah, since he's that's what he does. I'm at three fifty a day, hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred at JB Hunt. Yeah, that's pretty good. Three hundred fifty dollars a day. That's really good, right? So you're doing great there. And then I'll get another letter from somebody who's getting a hundred dollars a day. Does Paul know how to count beside money? He doesn't know how to count that either, right? That lantern fly permit, right? Christopher Robin two, took two drug tests to get into school. The place I was in seemed kind of shady. Test came back positive. Now they're telling me I have to take drug and alcohol classes. Oh, that's a problem. Usually when drivers take a drug test, it's split. At least that's how we do it. I assume that's the standard thing. I've only done it at this one company for years. But it's a split sample. So they you get they take the what you give them and they split it up right and so they're supposed to test one sample if that comes back positive they're supposed to test the other sample okay that's how it's supposed to work and we can ask the trooper about this tomorrow and they can they are then supposed to talk to you about it also before anything comes back anywhere hey here's a positive why could this be positive the the dot doctor and you say, well, I'm on this medication, I've done this kind of things, and so that's how it works. What should you do? I'd go immediately probably take my own drug test at that same place by paying for it myself and get the results back and uh, see what you can do. I probably wouldn't start a class at least until that and maybe talk to a lawyer uh, about what other legal things you could do about it if it's not true. You know, if it's not true, because you don't want a positive drug test on your record somewhere. So that's a problem. Anybody else got any better advice for that? The JB account I met was pretty great until they forced two days off per week. Well, what's wrong with that? You have to take time off. No regrets. Yeah, exactly. I always have more time than money. Therefore, you're underpaid. Well, make more money for the time that you work. I think it was faulty or fraudulent test. Where do I go from there? Yeah, well, you can always take your own test at another licensed testing facility that does like DOT physicals. There's plenty of them. Just Google them up in your area. They'll give you a drug test. I think they're 50 or 55 bucks where we do them at the place that gives you a physical. Um, I've never paid for one here because they give them to you for nothing, of course, but it'd be worth paying for your own and getting a negative test immediately. I think that'd be the first thing I would do. 
I've heard Swift dedicated is the same. They either love it or hate it. Yeah, Misty, it seems to be the, all these big companies, and I think part of it is their dispatch system. If you get on with the great dispatcher onto an account, oh man, you are just rolling. And then you get on with some schmo who just started last week and thinks like they have something to prove, and then you're done. You're, and then people quit. It doesn't do the company any good. JB Hunt's paying $30 an hour. That'd be pretty impressive. I have hazmat tanker in Manhattan, New York City. Any good companies? Oh, in Manhattan. Are there any companies even in Manhattan? I always study for my drug tests. I passed every time. <laughs> Alexandra, that's good. Paul told us 2 plus 2 equals 2.5 million. <laughs> and he was right. Thinking of trying Martin, paid detention and guarantee pay. Yeah, a lot of people do like Martin that have come on. Just say no to CBD. Oh, yeah, don't take any of those CBDs or anything. I don't care what the bottle says. My recommendation will always be do not take it until it's federally legal. Okay, until it's totally legal federal, don't take it. It's too much of a risk. I heard Thermo King is making refrigerated tarps for flatbeds. Yeah, that way they can compete in the refrigerated segment, which gets more. Actually, they're getting 243 a mile. Flats are only getting 228. So that'll be that'll be something. Link to get your lanternfly permit in my next post. All right. There's a link for the spotted lanternfly permit. First day of orientation at Supreme Road Tex. I'm in Bridgewater, New Jersey. All right. How's it going over there? What are they offering over there? Always people on the East Coast looking for something. Someone asked Trooper Hoover, what does he do with all the bonus money the state gives him for the tickets he writes? <laughs> They've always said that there's no, uh, you know, there's no kind of bonus or anything like that. So is Heartland Express still around? Uh, for rookies, yes, they sure are. But I would go to Millis between those two since they're owned by the same place. They seem to be better off. Comfortable, man. If you get busted on a drug test, it's not true. Go get a blood test done on the same day. That's what I'm saying. Go immediately. Go get another test immediately or as soon as possible uh, that you get on your own. Because if it is not true, you do not want that on your record. Oh, emergency equipment out on taxiway at Louisville. Why? Is somebody protesting on the taxiway for crying out loud? I almost quit because of bad dispatcher. Only reason why uh, we've thought about quitting any company. It's always the dispatch. And that's why I tell people before you quit, if you're at a larger place and they have more than one dispatcher, get a different dispatcher. Okay. That might just solve whatever problem you had. Just get somebody else that you can work with. We're going to get a smug test. Nah, nice. Can um. Paul be on your show. He would make a great guest. Yeah, uh, he doesn't respond to my emails, it turns out. Today's truckers are treated worse than prisoners. I know because uh, drivers don't have to tolerate the treatment. I guess a prisoner uh, can't leave. There's no bars, but the bars that the drivers are locked in, the cages the drivers are locked in, they have their own key. They can just leave at any time they want. They tolerate the treatment. You get what you will accept. Drivers that sit for four days and don't get paid, except that sitting for four days and don't get paid is okay. Prisoners can't leave. And uh, I don't know that tr prisoners should get treated any better anyway. So, uh, Norman Bates, good news. The Bates Motel now is vacancy. Stop and stay a while. The prices are to die for. Uh, JB on 350 a day, 350 at 12 hours, is 29.16 an hour. Having a difficult time understanding how that works. Well, if you work 12 hours a day, it would actually be a little less than that because you'd have overtime. Your straight time rate would be less, uh, which we could figure out momentarily. For the driver interested in Martin, it's a good company. You shouldn't even be disappointed. Uh, been on a local account for three years. So if you worked 60 hours a week, right, you'd have 20 hours of overtime there. So as I get a calculator out here, right, so you'd have, so you're getting 350 a day times five days. That's seventeen fifty a week, and your straight time rate at that rate is twenty five dollars an hour for seventeen fifty a week at overtime past forty. That's how you figure it out. I'll always figure rates with overtime because that's how even a fifteen year old at McDonald's is paid, and that's how drivers should be paid, and they should figure it that way as well. Always figure rate with overtime, but that's still good money. LTL and private fleets are the way to go. Stay away from uh, mega carriers like Martin. Okay. Well, a smaller fleet sometimes works for people and sometimes doesn't. It depends what uh, it depends what things you need. How, how goes it today? Gracie called me and said uh, she's <laughs> down a few roller wieners. Yeah, I don't know if she would eat those or not. You know, I don't know what she would uh, what she would do about those. I don't think she's that impressed with them. She would like one, but she's not that impressed with it. 
Somebody asked Trooper Hoover uh, if his face hurts and say, no, what's killing me? (laughs) Well, it's killing me. Nice. Most trucking companies do not get paid overtime. Uh, Well, that's the driver's fault. And you should always figure your pay with overtime. If a 15-year-old at McDonald's gets it, you should get it too. So always figure your pay at the end of the week with overtime. Because companies don't pay it, that doesn't mean you shouldn't get it. You should only work at a place that pays it if you're being paid by the hour. Try uh, Island Transport. Hazmat required hauls refined petroleum. All right, for uh, fuel. Right, exactly. What kind of uh, trucking is supreme? <laughs> Alexandra. Yeah, Gracie, that's how she looks most of the time. Barely awake, which I don't know where she is right now. Probably. I co- thought I heard her munching some chows over there. What do you think about uh, this break? 30 minutes to three hours. Do you want a three hour off duty break sometime during your day? That's the question. But. For that break, you've got to get a camera. Must install video monitoring system. That's what the DOT says. If you want this 30 minutes to three hours. That's how they're going to get the thing in the in the truck all the time. So for a 30 minute to three hour break, and your choice, it'd be your choice one time a day, up to three hours, off duty, doesn't count, your clock stops, everything stops, but you have to be watched. You're be, and who knows who's watching? I mean, the government is mandating this. Or they, they didn't say if they get to see it, but... Uh, video monitoring would be required so what do we think get take it drivers wanted it before but i ha- i don't see them doing it now by law trucking companies do not have to pay overtime that's correct they don't have to but they can and you should get it so many do and drivers that don't i don't get i don't understand so i always figure it with overtime because they don't have to doesn't mean that they don't pay it. It just means drivers that don't get overtime accept working without overtime, which I don't understand. Just saw an advertising for drivers in Massachusetts for 19 for CDLA. And on the East Coast, where are you going to live in Massachusetts for $19 an hour? At a, pro- at a protest site where they block off three of the blocks? Come on. Worse than prisoners? I haven't had forcible sexual assault yet. Okay. Haven't been to Gary yet. Uh, Petro. I'm calling my congressman. Yes, exactly. Look, drivers can always leave uh, and should. If a company, look, treats you poorly, doesn't pay you anything, is getting $400 week emails, leave. You have to leave. At some point, you just can't tolerate it. <laughs> Alexander's barely awake half the time, too. You totally relate to cats. Get your sleep. Please, everybody get a sleep. Why are people being rude about Trooper Hoover? People have respect for others. Christina, I don't know. I mean, the guy's nice enough to come on the show. That's what I'm saying. Please be nice to the guy. He doesn't have to do this stuff, you know, to come on to the show and answer driver's questions. And he comes on the show. So absolutely be nice to the guy. If you have a legitimate question about hours of service, that kind of thing, or Geotab, right? You can ask uh, her from uh, Fleet Nav Systems or you can ask him from the DOT. What companies pay hourly? A lot of uh, local companies pay hourly. I see. I've seen... 27 something 2750 or so plus overtime i've seen in indianapolis and that's from a temp service okay transforce had an ad in indianapolis for 2750 home every day overtime past 40 at a transforce temp service so if their driver's making a 19 dollars an hour with no overtime that's ridiculous you can just call them and get on in a place that pays more money 70 hours two thousand bucks down there so there's no reason not to get overtime our company's hiring yes there are plenty of places advertising paul harris they also advertise 35 cents a mile oh right 35 cents in massachusetts and 19 an hour all right does gracie lead you to her food bowl if it gets low she'll come over at food time and come out and gripe at me about it and she does attack your feet if you're walking around and she's kind of hungry with the, presumably the last of her strength, considering she hasn't eaten in like three hours. <laughs> Anyone that uh, drive wiggle wagons? Not for a long time. For 19, you can live in Florida. Well, if you can make it on 19. Comfortable man. Drivers uh, agree, Mark. Drivers should be paid overtime. Most companies do not pay it. Right, because drivers don't make them pay it. Any driver that's not getting overtime, what if nobody worked at that place? They couldn't. Everybody that called said, no, thank you. They'd pay overtime. The only reason they don't, which I understand the company's not paying it. They go, well, if we can get drivers to, to work without it, we're not going to pay it. Well, why do we tolerate that? You get what you'll accept. 
Go make more, not work more. Drivers always think, oh, well, I need to work more hours to make money. No, you don't. You need to make more money for the hours you work. That's right. Drivers should not have a blind loyalty to carrier if they're not treated well. Right. And it sh and if the, the driver's not doing a good job, the carrier ought to fire you. So it certainly should be both ways. When you go to work, you should do a good job. Or the carrier ought to say, you know what? We need somebody here who's willing to work. And so you got to hit the bricks. So both ways. And then if the driver's like, this is not working for me, they should leave. But don't stay there and gripe that, oh, I don't get overtime. Well, that's your choice not to get overtime. Because I get those too. And that's what I tell people. I go, look. Don't work there. <laughs> hey, don't take $17 an hour, which people have written to me, without overtime at a place. Do not accept that. I don't hear any talk on here about how air freight did. A lot of uh, air P&D at night around O'Hare back in the 90s. It was very chaotic. Yeah, you know, I used to run for a uh, place, Coast Dispatch. We did air freight, and I would go from O'Hare to JFK, JFK to Columbia, to uh, Columbia, to Columbus, Ohio with the cookie sheets because the air freight was on these huge sheets. They're as wide as the trailer, and I don't know how long they were, maybe 8 feet, 10 feet long, maybe 10 feet because it seems like they put five of them in there. That'd be 50 feet on a roller bed trailer. And when you pulled up to the dock, this one had a pump. They're probably air operated now, and you'd pump a lever on the side of the trailer. It was back by the tandems with a little box that opened up and wheels came out of the bottom of the trailer and they slid these cookie sheets in there. All five of them slid right in there. Put the wheels down, off you went. It was packed to the top and shrink wrapped and out on JFK, you'd go, it usually went to five different airlines. You'd pull up to LL, I remember going to them, uh, United and uh, stuff like that and you'd just pull up there and just pump the thing and the, the cookies would come out and that's it and that was so super simple and you, then you went he went somewhere around the corner and picked up like a bunch of these cookie sheets. That's what we called them. And those went to Columbus, Ohio, somewhere. Oh, this was so long ago. And they need to go empty back to O'Hare and start the whole thing over. Yeah. Used to do it all the time. Probably not as great now. There was a lot of traffic then. I can't imagine going to JFK now. Best shift is 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. with an hour for lunch. That is a good shift to get. <laughs> no, yikes. Smaller fleets won't pay as well or have good benefits uh, versus mega carriers. I had interviewed for quick rate. Paying benefits were horrible. That the problem, it, the pay might be good on a small fleet. It depends. But the benefits, a larger fleet has better benefits just from the fact they're being large. So any once places start getting 100, 200 trucks, you know, they just start talking big money, millions of dollars of uh, revenue, and they're going to have better benefits. So if you need benefits, you're going to need a bigger company. Some guy who's got three trucks, you know, in a whole harvester, you know, 8,300 or whatever, and a, oh, a haul or, you know, no problem. They're not going to get any benefits. Panama Jack, I'm with a private fleet home every weekend. Predictable schedule, paid mileage, stop and hourly. That's why drivers should try private fleets. Right. That's why these top 10 private fleets, PepsiCo, number one, two, Cisco, three, Walmart, four, Halliburton, Five U.S. Foods, six is Rise. I never heard of that. R e y s. Seven's PFG Performance Food Group. Eight is McLean, which everybody's seen them. Nine is Schlulenberger, and ten is Next Year Oil Field Services. That's the top ten fleets by tractor count in the United States. J P Noonan pays overtime after forty. Worked there five years until you uh, moved to Maine. Maine trucker. Yeah, exactly. So they pay overtime, and so that's going to be a better place because you're going to make more money. That's all. I mean, that's all. You just that's one of the things you ask them if it's hourly is do you pay overtime? If it's no, then you're like, well, if I'm over forty hours, I guess we're going to have a problem. You know, you need to wear a mask to get the three-hour break, and that's the only thing they didn't say. But they do say you have to have a video monitoring system. Must have it. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Make more. Don't work more. Uh, totally. <laughs> Trooper Hoover is your homie. I, I hope that you uh, will say hello to him tomorrow. Comfortable man, you agree? That's why I got out of the driver's seat. I'm working half as much and making three times the money. Right. So that's a perfect move. If you can make way more doing something else, if that's what you want to do or whatever, absolutely. But working I forever get letters about, I want especially this break. That's why this bothers me. I'm not for this break at all. These three hours are going to be unpaid at almost every place. It's going to be unpaid. So, no, I'm not for that at all. Why stop your clock, you know, for an unpaid, unpaid break? No way. But people do it all the time. I don't agree with it. 
Only 12 cookies made it. <laughs> well, I call these cookie sheets. I don't know what they were actually called. I'm sure they have some kind of official name in the airline industry. Mid-sized characters, uh, carriers um, um, often have good benefits. A carrier with uh, 300 trucks is likely to have good benefits. Yeah, once they start getting uh, hundreds of trucks, that's, uh, you know, you got a serious company going, and then you can get decently priced benefits because these smaller places even though some of them they may offer insurance like it's got 50 trucks but then it's like twelve hundred dollars a month out of your pocket or whatever it's crazy price it's something like they have a benefit you can't afford it so it's like not having it so no good got a job delivering food and no worries about having uh, enough work that's true that's true once there's food everybody has to eat even if the whole economy closes down as we see the government just gives everybody money and they continue to buy food. And so people that deliver food always have something to do. Christina, federal law states anything over 40 hours is mandatory time and a half. Oh, but but they exempted transportation. That's why trucking, uh, that's why trucking companies get away with not paying it. They exempt transportation out of it, but they can pay it. They just don't have to pay it. Steel Horse, according to the top 10. That's true, too, right? A lot of these are food companies. A lot of these top 10 companies are food because everybody has to eat no matter what. Like the little book for kids, right? Panama Jack, uh, not true about small fleets. I work with a small fleet, seven trucks. That is a small fleet. That's only seven more trucks than I have. Think about that. And excellent benefits get paid by the hub mile, which is unheard of at a mega carrier. That's true. But, I mean, excellent benefits, that, that would be relative, right? And how, Like, how much is insurance there? You know, what are the other benefits? Do you get paid holidays and vacations and all that stuff? That would be really surprising to get paid holidays and paid vacations and cheap health care and dental and all that at a seven truck fleet. They can only be making a million a year, you know, a couple million bucks a year there. Comfortable and I'm not for that three hour break either. Forcing a drive cam on the drivers is horrible. That's the way they do it, though, right? So many drivers want this break that, oh, well, we'll just add this little uh, thing in here so to get it you must have a video monitoring system or you won't get the benefit of that break that's one way to do it gp transco it's all always interesting seeing a carrier that pays on 1099 it claims to offer health insurance <laughs> well do they offer it to their employees well how do they offer to uh i'd love to see that a 1099 and health insurance but you're not an employee how does that work how do th those drivers need to turn that place in uh, exempt from farm work. Yeah, there's a few things in there that are exempt, including transportation. Walmart's biggest growth is in food, and they actually said the other day that Walmart sales are dropping off because people are running out of the extra money and the extra unemployment uh, came is not being paid anymore. <clears throat> I thought we would have seen another $1,200 by now. I'm very surprised that especially in an election year, they didn't get together and hand everybody money and everybody just takes credit for it, but that didn't happen. I'm surprised. I still think it'll come out before the election. 15 a week in health insurance? Yeah, that's a bargain. But you're at a big place, so they can afford very discounted health insurance. At a place with just a two trucks, that's going to be, you know, maybe two, three hundred dollars a week. And then, you know, that's enough where you're like, well, forget it. I can't even afford it. Although hub miles at a small place would be very good. I very rarely see hub miles almost nowhere pays hub miles. Is a taxi company considered transportation? No, because generally taxi drivers are independent contractors. They lease the car, usually for so much, for so many hours. As I knew a guy that used to do that in Chicago. It was $75 for 12 hours, it seems like, or $125 for 24 hours, included insurance. But he, was, he could drive or not. It didn't matter. He was an independent contractor, so he's not really a transportation worker. Panama Jack, they have 200 employees making furniture, but need seven trucks to deliver small furniture. She's, well, she still get the benefit of a larger place that has a small fleet, is what you're saying. I'm talking about some guy who buys seven trucks, and that's what he has, it's just a trucking company. You work for a company that has their own small private fleet. So you get a side benefit that way. Our driver's weekly insurance costs go down over the years. Huh, right now it's $68 per paycheck. For a good PPO plan for a single, that's not bad. I didn't know it went down over the years. That's even better. Most of the top fleets have cameras. That's true. And the places that are going to sign up for this already have cameras in their trucks. And even if somebody signs up for it without them, they're going to they'll put it out there and go, "Well, look, don't worry, 
It's only for this test. We have to do it. The government's making us do it. That's how they're going to get them in all the other trucks. You know, and owner operators, presumably, if they signed up, they'd also be able to do it. But they'll have to have a camera in the truck. They will have to do it. What kind of camera? Driver facing or just outward facing? Well, it says, it actually says, and I looked at that, tried to find that. It says that the carriers, the vehicles, must install a video monitoring system. That's what it says. They didn't elaborate beyond that. So I think that's interesting. It's likely one that looks at the driver because the FMCSA and uh, several other safety things are saying that that increases safety and stuff. So it's likely that, but it doesn't actually specify that. But it does, all it said is video monitoring system. I think the USA, USA truck is paying three cents a mile more if you can drive a manual transmission. Really? That's got to be the first place I've seen that. They can't have many left. We don't have many. There's a few sticks left, but uh, not many. I'll, I've been in an automatic for years. At this point, 75% opt to have the driver facing camera for two cents. I, I know people take it. They do accept it. I've always said I would not take the two cents because I got to earn the whole six cents there anyway by getting the fuel mods. And that's what would bother me, I guess, there about a Western Star is I'd be concerned I wouldn't get the fuel bonus because the truck's not as efficient. So I'd really have to think about that because I'm basically paying the money for the truck. 196, uh, is that just for you or for a family plan? Uh, uh, let's see. That's a lot better than the 196 I'm paying. See, that's a lot. How many trucks do you have at the company where you're paying $200 a week out of your own pocket for health insurance? I mean, for two people. That's a lot of money. I pay $73 a week for two people here. Why do they want the litigation in court? Why do they want the, where are we uh, at the litigation for that? What, am, what did I miss on that one? Let's see here. Oh, a driver. I will say litigation reminded me that a driver finally got paid because the Coronavirus Act provides for emergency paid sick leave. Under the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act, and his trucking company refused to pay him when he had a positive COVID test and he had to be home for 14 days. And he filed to get paid and couldn't. Well, it turns out carriers, well, not carriers, but employers that have less than 500 total employees are subject to the emergency paid sick leave act they had to pay him they paid him like three thousand one hundred dollars with back pay and uh, interest and stuff like that so uh companies still have to pay that stuff because of the covid relief bill and all that it was totally a mess but a driver got thirty one hundred dollars because the company refused to pay him even though they showed him the line goes the company said i don't care so he filed uh, with that Steel horse pays 15 for family. That's a super bargain. And you're at a smaller place than me. Okay, much smaller. Did you ever discuss why landing your handles on the opposite side of the trailer? I don't know. People have suggested that so that you'll go or walk around the trailer and look at that side of the trailer. I get those every once in a while on older trailers. I find it to be ridiculous. <laughs> so, but uh, no, I it, that's what it seems to be. I'm going to have Paul do my 2020 taxes. You need Paul to help you on your 2020 taxes? Yeah, I think maybe he could file a few years prior and do some, um, you know, adjustments to my taxes. I would appreciate it. Opie Knievel, I know you don't uh, share the name of the company, but I was wondering what kind of driving you do. No, I just go to Evansville and back every day. That's uh, that's about it. I do a single drop and hook. So uh, pretty easy work, to be honest with you. Uh, many people would call it lazy work or whatever. But that's what I do. We have uh, longer things to do, but I'm not really interested in working that many hours. So does GP Transco hire owner operators? They do. You should contact GP Transco right here and they would uh, be happy to talk to you about it. You can join the Teal Revolution and you don't even have to have a Teal truck to be in the Teal Revolution. How about that? Because I've seen some of their owner operators in different colored trucks. Let's see, where did I go off to? Oh, September 9th to 11th. Don't forget that next week. Road check, right. So vans were 220. I didn't mention that either. 220, flats 228, reefer 243. And we yellow freight 422 this week in stocks. They are down from 508 on the 25th of August. What is going on with this place? Are they going to make it? I mean, road runners, three bucks. They're, they're coming back down again. They're down, what, 80 cents in a few days. That's huge swings. 
Drivers simply need to walk out in mass over this three-hour BS rule. They do, but what is going to happen is drivers love the three-hour thing. Overwhelming support for a three-hour unpaid off-duty break during the day when the driver gets to choose it because it extends the 14-hour clock. So drive, always what I hear about, oh, what traffic or whatever, you know, so I want to be able to stop. And what the real problem is, I don't think you're being paid properly. If your company makes you pick something up where they know you're going to get loaded at 4.30 p.m. Uh, in downtown Chicago and you're trying to get out, you know, well then. So if we have 100 office staff and 400 drivers, the office staff want health insurance, but only 40%, 40% of drivers don't take. So 60% of the drivers don't take the insurance. I don't know anybody that doesn't take insurance here. Really? What do they say? Do they have it through their wife or, or spouse or um, veteran? I guess there's a few of them that are, have VA benefits, but really over half the people don't take health insurance? Overall, the, as a result, the participation rate is low, which means that each participant has to pay more. If 80% of the drivers participated, the cost would be much lower. That's crazy. I wonder if that's industry-wide. All right. Is anybody on here driving but does not take health insurance from their company? And if so, why don't you take the health insurance that your company offers you? Still not hiring there. People come here and stay there. Oh, well, if you have a place where nobody leaves, that's correct. Then so you're not hiring and just keeping the people that you have and keeping them busy so that everybody still makes a good paycheck too, which is good, right? That's good. And once they hire, I'm sure you get plenty of people to fill in the place there. How long does it take to get to Evansville? About three hours and 35 to 345 depending which way I go, because it depends on traffic, on uh, which one I'm going to go down there. So I was checking 50 different traffic ways and decide which way to go. No more than four hours, depending if there's a train or whatever like that. Misty's going to go car shopping. Great show. All right, let's uh, send a picture of what you get. Chris, uh, sorry I'm late. So Mark just realized you and Smart Trucker, YouTube guy, are not the same person. No, we're not. <laughs> we are not the same person. So he is much better looking than me as most people on here. So, uh, but yeah, <laughs> he's different. The government will never let YRC go out of business. Are they going to give him even more money then? Here's another billion and a half dollars. <laughs> GP Trans go buy American. All right. Whatever I drop my trailer, I usually put the landing gear down about an inch above the ground. I drop my airbag so it's easier for the next guy to couple. And I appreciate it. So many times. I go to get a trailer and it's three inches above the fifth wheel. I'm like, how long did somebody have to sit here and crank this to get it that high? What if I want to take a one hour break, but don't want to stop my 14 hour clock? Oh, that's interesting. Well, why wouldn't you stop your clock? It wouldn't because it wouldn't make any difference. But if you are under this system, right, you would take a one hour break and it would stop your clock. Right now you could take a one hour break and not stop your clock. If you wanted to right now, just go off duty, stop somewhere and go off duty for an hour, which would not stop your 14 hour clock and you'd be all set. So you could still do that right now. Yet another reason to get out of the driver's seat. Uh, you have assurance Jesus is your insurance. Well, I wonder how that works at the hospital. Luke, uh, that's what we do with the tanks. Some drivers simply don't want insurance and don't want to have anything taken out of their check. Well, okay, but I mean, health insurance you go in the hospital one time, it's super expensive. Air Gunner Bob doesn't take it because you have a low rate plan through retirement. All right, so you have other insurance. That's interesting. The average age of drivers, though, what, 48 or 49? So most drivers, it would seem like, are not retired yet or where they have a retirement plan. Comfortable Man is a veteran and gets yours free. So I wondered about that. I guess there are some veterans that would get free insurance. S. Isaacs is self-insured, so I'm like the only one taking health insurance, I guess. The reason is for safety. If you have to drop the trailer, stay on the shoulder, it keeps you from being on the side of traffic. That's what Fruhoff once told you. Really? In case you have to drop the trailer on the shoulder of a road, then you can crank it on that side. Well, I never heard that one. That percentage might be higher than 40, but it's still not as high as it should be. It should be almost everybody, right? Dave Johnson's going to roll out early. Have a safe week. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I don't take it because you have your own for less. That's what I'm saying. So are people just getting it through their spouse or some other way like that? Panama jacked it over the road for many years. And say, uh, and which too much predict unpredictability. Sitting in truck stops, poor dispatching, damaged equipment, and the list goes on and on. And didn't pay enough to deal with the BS. That's why a lot of people leave. Because when you're gone all week. 
it should pay two thousand dollars i think it should start at two thousand dollars better than judgment day okay well that's fair enough jerry go paul food stamps for everybody that's true sounds like you were the company that largely lived in the spot market with more dedicated there's more stability i love dedicated i always recommend it to people it smooths out your check and dedicated is the same thing every day or every week because i used to go to from indianapolis to boston every week and then to connecticut and picked up cookies in connecticut dropped those off in fort wayne indiana came back to indianapolis took a load to salem virginia and came back to indianapolis same thing every week every week everybody knew me same thing every week so dedicated not dedicated is not east of i-80 or east of the mississippi river right east of i-80 east of the mississippi river is not dedicated or you know northeast is not dedicated dedicated is a run a specific run i think that smooths out your check everybody knows you you get more efficient at it i think that's the way to go gp transco that's why we're aimed at being 75 percent dedicated customer freight in a year from now yeah we're the same run silver uh my insurance is not good it's free i just pray i never have to use it i don't know why would you well since it's free i guess you would take it but otherwise not i mean if it's i'll tell you one trip to the hospital and you're done you're you'll be bankrupted ralph is here good morning van press good morning paul harris the right-handed cranks are when you have a right twix yeah they were on the wrong side that day right i haven't had one in a couple of weeks but every once in a while i'm like what happened half the time i walk back to get my spare crank because i have a crank and a bolt for just for that reason and a nut but uh then i'm like oh wait a minute it's probably on the other side spot market is booming right now i know they said the spot market is super hot gas went up too for people filling up their car because of the hurricane as soon as they announce the hurricane boom gas is up like 40 cents gp transco at the moment it's pretty great yeah so it's helping out companies that uh, can get freight on the spot market or owner operators that pick their freight off the market trucker hershey if i sit at the dock for four hours after driving nine hours dispatch might expect you to do a pickup because your clock was stopped oh that's interesting it's but the problem is it's for off duty it has to be off duty and it says it actually says it's up to the driver so i know companies will try to make you use it but it is up to the driver if they want to use it or not because you could theoretically use it later or whatever but it's up to the driver so don't let them push you around on it because it's ultimately up to you dedicated is the way to go even the worst run isn't as bad if you run it every day right you get used to it and the run gets better <laughs> the run gets better you know everybody when you show up everybody knows who you are it's like walking into cheers mark right everybody knows everybody so it's great the Dow Jones is down 200 points right now. Dang it. It does fluctuate. But look, yellow is up and down. Pam's 37 bucks. It was 50 bucks a few weeks ago. 10 years ago, I spent a week in the hospital. It was $10,000 a day. Right. Without insurance, you just have to go into them with like your empty pockets. You pull your pockets out and go, I don't know. Here, All I got is lint. That's it. I mean, it's a real problem. You, the Getting that stuff paid. Oh, gosh. Air Gunner Bob, thank you very much. A six week my new company now things are great getting loaded in oberts ohio had a 700 mile day last week wow missed the last two shows but enjoying it today well thank you and uh thank you for being here uh and telling us that that's a big day how fast does your truck go holy moly there are times when you drop the trailer on the, trailer on the shoulder, shoulder of the road on a breakdown you can pull the tractor on and swap it with another tractor that's true but i mean to move the handle for those few times that has happened I mean, how often do people do that? It's been years since I've had to do that. When I got hit by lightning. No, I got to the truck stop on that too. Yeah, so I'm not sure. We are off duty when at the dock. Well, then you're going to tell them, uh, sorry, I'm not doing it. There's always that. You're too tired. You could always be too tired. It was a standard room for $10,000. So you have to share it with uh, some tuberculosis patient. When I was late for my 7 o'clock appointment this morning, because my phone alarm is horrible. Hey, time for a new phone. Get one of those um, screaming, meanie things at the truck stop, those super loud things. And like I always say, if you need an alarm, you're not sleeping enough. Try to get more sleep. I know well, it's easy for you to say, Mark. I'm sorry. I do think that's better for your health overall. You'll feel better during the day. You won't have to get that 96-ounce thing of coffee. 
dedicated one was uh, starting to sound pretty good until I think Ted Danson's on the other end. It's not bad. It's still not bad, even if Ted Danson is there. Because the mailman guy's there, too. That sounds right. These prices are made to be paid by insurance companies, not real people. Once you get into the hundreds of dollars a week, you know, $200, $300 a week, you can't afford the insurance. You take a steel horse takes a vacation when the spot market goes down. That is the time. Then you get out and get back in uh, when it goes back up. It goes uh, 75. Oh, that helps. Air Gunner Bob it was all interstate. 695 miles with nine minutes left. That is a great day of driving. And that's some good money then, too. 700 miles. Wow. Looks like uh, your overall attitude is more positive that lately. Good things happening. Made it to your pickup, uh, Stone to Colorado, Captain Flatbed. So what's, so what's that load going? Military health insurance is 56 a month for the family. That's a bargain, but always the insurance is going to be less there. I think I'd do okay at 73. It's not the cheapest insurance, but there are people uh, at 150, 250 a week. So I think at 73 a week, it's not bad. Consider it's pretty good insurance. The wife had to get a COVID test for her surgery. That was $5. The test was $83. Her surgery, she just got a bill for $4,000 or something for elbow surgery. It's going to be like $105 out of pocket, so not terrible. Nadeka for the masses. I'll be in Memphis for a drop later tonight. How many people are going to try to kill me for being white? Oh, most of the people there. 700 miles of one day is nothing. Uh, you're for Larry Miles. That's not a bad day. That's uh, exhausting. When you bring back things to consider, the, tar the trucking companies are going putting less and less information out there. So it's much harder and harder to find out about them. They won't tell you anything, and it's very difficult to find things out about companies. The screaming meanie will bake up everyone at the truck stop. I know, they're super loud, right? So if that thing doesn't get you up, then you heck, there could be one going off right now in that Celadon truck sitting at the Petro there. My CB has an alarm on it. Really? Sue, these people getting these fancy CBs? My Midland 75785 does not have an alarm on it, surprisingly. Still feel the same about over the road and today's trucks, but no uh, need to complain. <laughs> well, I think it over the road should be at $2,000 $2, to start on over the road. Over the road starts at that. I'm surprised at the people that aren't taking insurance. So maybe companies that have higher insurance, I guess I'm finding out, have a higher percentage of drivers that do not take the insurance. So new starter companies, which seem to have higher insurance rates, have newer drivers that think, oh, I don't need the insurance or I don't want to take the insurance out because I need the money. And so then the rates for people that do need it are even higher. That's an interesting way to do it. Your stepfather is uh, working for a company that charged him three a week for truck and trailer insurance, Gonzalo. I don't know if that's good or not as I'm a company driver. So... What are people's? Is that a good price? Is there an owner operator that thinks that's a good price? I have no idea. That seems like a lot to me, but I don't know. I have Geico on my car. Paul, with company paid insurance, you don't think of the cost. My Cobra payment was 800 a month. Paying 50, 60 a week isn't too bad. That was for a single. Yeah, it isn't terrible. And I know the company picks a lot of that up, and I consider that into pay. Like, you know, I would if I went somewhere else, but the insurance was $200 a week, well, that's another $130 right off the top that I'm not getting. So you got to consider all that stuff. <laughs> Our VP of HR and safety just came back from a trip to Alaska. Huh. Her and her husband witnessed whaling with their own eyes. It's legal there. It looks pretty crazy. Whaling? People were killing whales? I wouldn't even tolerate that. That's terrible. Second show in a row, you mispronounced my brand name. Okay. I just haven't signed out of this account because I'm lazy. Nadaka, Nadak, for the masses. I'm sorry. I don't try to mispronounce names other than uh, Pinkle Stinker. So uh, I apologize. Handsome Poochie. Hello, Mark. Five hours of the shipper still counting. The thing is, there should be five hours of paid time and still counting. That's what I'm saying. So, Mark, how many police officers get hit? That's why they approach your car on the right side of the road. Look, I understand that, but I'm, how often do you drop a trailer on the interstate or whatever? I'm still trying to think of the last time I actually had to do that. Maybe, uh, not, a, have it, not since this truck. This truck hasn't broke down on the interstate. I cannot think of the last time I had to do that. To move it there for one thing, where it's on an, the annoying side of the trailer, basically. It's a long time. I can't think of a time. 
Oh, Cash is King Trucking. Your Cascadia has a built-in alarm in the sleeper. Well, you did said you actually have talked about that. You got like the fancy schmancy model on the inside. Hope you're getting paid for that, Imperial. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's no reason to sit there and then they say, oh, well, we're not going to pay you anything. I once studied hard all night for a urine test. Did you pass it? That is the question. Henry scored. It amazes me how low a pay, dr pay drivers will work for. I pulling triples to Chicago and clear 65 a year with benefits. 10 hours a day, 5 days a week. You're home weekends and off holidays. All time paid. Exactly. There's jobs like this out there. That's what frustrates me, I guess, about people that really make hardly any money. Four or $500 a week checks I get. And they, they've been, they're like, I've been here three years. I'm making $500 a week. They make me sit uh, all weekend, Friday to Monday every week. And I'm like, why don't you leave? Oh, well, uh, you know, they treat me good. Well, then, uh, then why are you writing to me? I mean, I don't know what to say. Your time can be paid if you're at the right place. And you can make a decent 65 a year clear and be home every day. It's possible. It's easily possible. I find these ads constantly. Bag of Donuts is here. Good afternoon. That seems like a pretty easy name to mispronounce. Once you get consonants that are close together like that, I don't know what to do with it. Zach, hey, what's happening? GP Transco, ever notice how some carriers actually add health insurance and benefits to their driver's salary? Yes, <laughs> I love that. And claiming drivers make 80 a year, but the fine print is 24000 of his benefits. Yes, some of them will do that. Drivers can make nearly $100,000 a year here. Uh, but then, oh, it's a, the health insurance this much. This is, And even their contribution, there are contributions to Social Security. I mean, unemployment benefits, workman's comp. And they go, oh, look at all the benefits that drivers are making. These are benefits that they make anyway. Trucker Hershey, your truck has a radio alarm in it. Never used it, though. Man. I run two loads a week with multiple stops. That way I eliminate the guesswork of what's next for me. Not getting rich, but net $1,400 a week and home every weekend. That's not bad, too. You're making, though, what the person us earlier is making being home every day. I saw a flatbed driver tensioning his straps in the shoulder of the interstate. Only if it, they're like if it's coming off. No flashers and no vest. He was just standing there. He's lucky to be alive. Yeah. That load, when I had a flatbed, that load would have to be falling off the truck before I'd stop on the interstate and try to tighten everything up. I mean, holy mackerel. Now, if it was going to come off, you would have to, but gee whiz. I was told I was going to be given a urine test, Cassius King Trucking. I told them I stopped drinking urine years ago. <laughs> that You could put that in one of the uh, many live shows uh, that come out daily. Right there at Cassius King Trucking. How could you study for a urine test? I think they have online courses now. Recovered um, one on the side of the interstate once years ago. The wrecker pulled the truck out. I pulled the trailer away. Yeah, steel horse. But I mean, that years ago, exactly. How often is it that you have to do that? Like, very rarely. It doesn't seem like it's worth switching sides for the very rare instance that that happens. Trailers uh, get very aggravated if the landing gear is not maintained, they seem to get very cranky in the winter time, right? And I see what you're saying there. Nowadays, I think the record service takes both the truck and trailer and separates them for liability purposes. Okay, I do see them pulling both things around. They brought me a truck when I when my truck was hit by lightning, but I got to the truck stop and parked there, so I didn't. I actually didn't have to stop inside the road. In the process of getting an 05 Pontiac GTO, I'll be excited once I'm home. Wow. You don't see those around. Bobby Kohler is here and just up. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. I'm live every Monday at 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, be sure to bring your roller wiener and be here. Okay, we have a safety step person interviewed. Nice. Great show as always. See you next Monday. All right. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Don't forget to join the Teal Revolution at GP Transco. Unless you live in Florida or Georgia. Okay. Subject to terms and conditions. Your mileage may vary. See dealer for details. <laughs> so exactly. Don't forget 9-11 is road check. Little America is going to pull you off the fuel island and tow you away for sitting there for your 30-minute break. And it's about darn time. Holy mackerel. I couldn't believe it. Flats are up the highest since July 21st, 2018. It's crazy. Top 10 private fleets, PepsiCo, number one private fleet. Some of you on here are private fleets, did not make the list. 
because these fleets like PepsiCo, they have almost 11,000 tractors, and that is no joke right there. And this big thing this week, this 30-minute break, 30 minutes to three hours, you'll be able to stop your clock for between 30 minutes and three hours. But one of the caveats, how about that, is the um, company must install video monitoring system, a video monitoring system. FedEx always dropping trail on shoulder on Donner during chain up season. Why would they do that? To chain them up? That's where you really don't want to drop. GP Trans going to Florida and Georgia. Like, forget this. We can't, we hate peaches. We only like apple pie, not peach pie. Pondering fifth wheel handle driver side, trailer crank other side. Oh, right. What about that? You have to come around anyway. I guess they're thinking, look, you have an automatic release. So, but uh, not everybody has that. So I do have an automatic release in my truck. Not all the trucks have them. Agreed, though. So you still have to get there. I guess they think you're closer to the truck that way. It won't be as big of a deal. Al Johns, what did you miss? The usual uh, that GP Transco is not a fan of peaches, stuff like that. They, in fact, uh, no one there is even allowed to eat a peach. I think you can't even bring a peach into the, you can't even bring a peach into their brand new terminal. They're like peaches. No way. You can't even have peach fuzz. You have to fully be, grow or shave. Now they're saying they sent me the wrong load. You're going to Fargo. Good. Back to the way it was. They need to get with the program. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, no, they're, this is a test. If we're talking about this, this 30 minute through our test, companies can sign up for it right now. You have to be a carrier to sign up for it. And you have to meet certain criteria, like you have to have a satisfactory safety rating, which almost everybody does. You have to have an out of service rate that's lower than the national average, stuff like that. And then you can sign up for this test, this pilot program for having this break, allow your drivers to do it. And they have, must have video monitoring system installed in the truck before they get to have it. And you also have to do a few things like give the data to the FMCSA so that they can study the data, that kind of thing. I've seen idiots taking showers while parked in the fuel lane. Ridiculous. I'm just so torn about that. I'm just so happy the driver's taking a shower. It's almost worth waiting for him rather than stand behind him that he stinks so bad. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that, but I agree with you. Little America is the first one to finally, finally do this. It's so frustrating having to back out behind people. What are we doing here? You should be able to get in there and get out with whatever you need before I'm done fueling behind you. What happened to uh, the meat flavored sodas? Oh, they're still going good. I mean, with the COVID, it's been kind of slow. You know, people were a bit in their houses and they weren't set up for home delivery. But those are uh, those are still available, of course. Why don't you just go back to pre-2004 logging rolls with the LDs? Perfect time and brakes. Drivers more rested without pressure on 14 hours. Aviator trucker. I don't know. See, I'm on the other side of it that I don't think... I really don't think a driver should have to work 14 hours a day every single day to make a living. That is a lot of work. That's way, that's almost double the average American's work day. The average American's like 38 point something hours. To have to work 70 hours, I don't think drivers should have to work that long. So I don't think the hours of service are the problem. The problem is there's so much unpaid time. If all your time was paid, imagine how much money you'd make. And you wouldn't have to be right up to 14 hours every single day. Still, of the DEF gauge stopped working. Ugh, derated the truck, right? Wrecker pulled the truck. Another truck pulled the trailer. $250 part made the truck towable. 10 hours of labor to replace. Yikes. Is that the last time that you had to split them up somewhere like that? I drank a vampire smoothie at the, the Valartis grocery. Nothing happened Yet. Yet. No towing trucks from the view line. Oh, okay. They are that they're doing. They interviewed the manager and they said, yeah, they're going to, they're going to do that. Absolutely. They got to sign up and they're out telling people right now, warning them. And that's what they absolutely said that. That's why it was made the news. Wasn't there some video saying that food trucks were going to be at rest areas? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mine, by the way, that's over already. Not only did you miss it, it happened and it's over. So for a while during the COVID, the time of COVID's, when everything was basically closed, they allowed many states, including this one, Indiana, allowed food trucks to be at rest areas during the day. So you could stop in and get uh, a lot of more taco trucks, which are delicious at the food areas, the rest areas, because you can get, get them immediately, a burrito, something that's easy. And yeah, they had food trucks, but they've, those, they've let those expire now because they say everything is fine. 
nothing to see here, right? Well, meanwhile, behind him, everything is burning down, but nothing to see here. Don't worry about it. And uh, for, as far as I know, I don't think any state has them now. I think it, that's over because they're, they're not allowed there. The federal government allowed food trucks to be there. All the truck stops griped about it, too. They're like, oh, well, drivers won't get off at our overpriced truck stops and buy $10 roller wieners. Exactly. But it made it more convenient. They don't allow them, though, anymore. So not only did they have them, you missed every one of them. It's not about the size of your private fleet. It's about how you use it. That's very true. That's very true. There's tons of private fleets that do good. Uh, there's just an ad this weekend here for O'Reilly's, who has a private fleet. They're an auto parts store in the Midwest. I don't know if you have them where you are. It's their home every day, but they run out of southern Indianapolis somewhere, somewhere down there. But yeah, this, so they're running an ad. That's presumably what I assume is a private fleet. So now there are three hour breaks to the fuel line. That'll be the thing. A driver will sit there for three hours and they'll go, well, look, I have to I have this break. I'm allowed to take it. So I'm going to take my three hour break right here. That's going to result in some beat downs. I have random drug tests unless they're testing for awesomeness and or roller winners or vape. You're good. All right. Uh, my stepdad told me at UPS, one guy fuels with the other guy showers. If there are teams, that's how you, a lot of teams do it, right? One guy runs in or person, all right, it doesn't have to be two men, all right, let's say that, but it can be uh, anybody, and one person would run in, the other person is filling up the truck, but they're on a tight schedule too. Little America get 99 cent ice cream and your truck towed for free. <laughs> it's pretty good. I love it. Look, who doesn't think this is a great idea? This is a great idea. Everybody's been stuck behind somebody, especially reefer drivers. That was very frustrating running a reefer. The most frustrating part was filling the reefer up. Okay, because this goober up here is not pulled up. So I can't get the reefer up to the pump to fill it up. And so I got to wait for that person to get out of the way to just continue filling my truck up. Food trucks need to happen again for the sole purpose of that iron skillet is garbage. I, I thought they should stay, but all the truck stops all were griping about it. Rather than booting, use a toll gate that only operates when... Uh, fuel or def is purchased that's interesting too that'd be an interesting way to do it that you have to you only get out of the yard free if you buy something but i guess it wouldn't pe stop people from going up there only the 2000 pre-2004 login are used to get my 10 hours of driving done and my day ended in 12 and a half hours if i get to rest in between it's better because if i was tired i could at least relax yeah there was always that there, but each time the law changed, and we're going to change here on the 29th of September to the new rules, and then we're going to get this three-hour break. So at some point in the future, we'll change the new rules again. They own their own wrecker service also, so it might just happen. Oh, that'd be a great idea. Why don't they park their own truck out there then? Why do they need to boot everybody? Par I would park that truck right in front of the fuel island and stand there. And I'd have pay somebody to stand there and tell people, right, walk by them with a stopwatch. you got 10 minutes wish food trucks were commonplace in rest areas i don't know why they're not but the federal government doesn't allow it oh it's 75 cent ice cream there it's like a 1960 oh beat downs for sure bobby Co. look you sit at a fuel liner for three hours and especially if the you are fueling and then somebody pulls up behind you and now goober number one in the front row is not coming out for three hours oh my gosh he's in there he's in the petro sitting down eating like getting a full meal or whatever and then a shower are you required to log your fuel stops? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything you do to or upon the truck, as it says, is log time on duty. Tag team showers. Those are fun. One truck gets towed and the rest will move quickly. That's all they got to do. That's the thing. Tow one truck. I would video that the at the truck stop and post it and tell everybody else you're next. Nobody's going to sit there anymore. Uh, what hole do you keep your fifth wheel? My fifth wheel does not move. <laughs> so it's wherever they set it at the factory. I would have to I would have to call the uh, maintenance and have them unscrew it and move it for me. So it is non-movable. Panama Jack, you're 100%, uh, you're 100, correct, Mark? Uh, too much unpaid time. Yeah, there shouldn't be any unpaid time. I live in Texas where the cheapest diesel is $1.83 at the Valero. Exit 120. Right in the front to find the loves. All right. That's pretty good, I guess. I don't know. Was three something? I don't look. <laughs> that's terrible. A company driver, though. But I don't look at the price. I just fill the truck up because, honestly, it isn't my problem. I don't own the truck. Yes, you must log a fuel stop. Absolutely. If fuel stop is logged, that's on duty time for sure. 
In the age where loves will sue Sap Brothers, the TA will sue Flying J for stealing their business. Oh, that'd be interesting. I'd like to see that lawsuit. I'm surprised CRST hasn't sued those places. Al Johns, I pull a little pup trailer when I feel I pull up like I have a 53 foot trailer. Good. Get then the next person that's got a reefer can actually pull up and fuel that while you are still uh, in the thing and pulled up. That's great. And unless you have one of the reefers with the tank on the wrong side, every once in a while I'll see an owner operator. It's usually an owner operator. And the tank is hanging on the passenger side. I'm like, why is the opening over there? But then you look up and they have the DEF on the passenger side. I'm like, is this, is this somebody European? What is happening here? What am I seeing? My two drivers pay 100 weekly for medical. That's not bad. 1,000 deductible, 20 copay. Get our insurance through my leaser, lessor, right? And have a good deal worked out. Pay the remainder of my two after the 100. That's very good. For a, for a place like that, that's really good. You don't log fuel stops if you're on an exempt load. Oh, well, that's true. If you're running exempt, you don't log anything right now. Cash is King Trucking, which should change the name to King of Exempt lo Trucking. King of Exempt Trucking. Uh, nothing is logged, right? So you don't have to worry about logging anything at the moment if you're running exempt. 60 hours never changed and now changed six times in 16 years. I know. For all these years, no problem. Everybody did the same rules. Everything was fine. Now every three minutes, they're like, oh, let's do something different. Let's try something new. They like to use boots because they can do it to multiple trucks at once and it's faster. And I guess they can make you pay just to take the boot off. They don't have to hook you up. But believe me, if they start hooking one truck up, the other trucks would leave. Are there still exempt loads? Yes, they extended it to the middle of next month. Groceries, uh, you know, COVID stuff, all that stuff is still is still exempt. Yep. So, yeah, there's still people, some people I know, running these loads and uh, not logging them and being legal, totally legal about that. It's 75 cent ice cream at Little America and very easy parking. If the parking is so easy, why do people have to block the fuel island? That's always the question, right? My first week trucking ever, I pulled up to the fuel lane and shut the truck off. And long story short, the battery died. So I stuck there three hours to tell a tow truck uh, got there because he couldn't jump it. Yeah, well, I would open the hood and say I'm broke down and put that cone behind you, I guess. Do I have to log uh, my driving time in a log book? Not anymore. <laughs> Only mackerel. Unless you're in an old truck, you're going to be logging your driving time in an ELD. Got my Class A permit and passed my DOT physical. All right. I'm 23 and just starting my trucking. All right. Well, good. Well, we'll see you on the road. And uh, if you're at Little America, be sure to park so you don't get your truck towed away. That's great. You got a career uh, that'll last your whole life. Livestock is still exempt. Right. That's true, too. Livestock. I always forget about livestock. So they're exempt. Groceries that are to distribution centers or stores are exempt. COVID, like gloves and soaps and uh, hand sanitizer and all that's exempt. There's a bunch of exempt stuff. Oh, people, like if you haul a load of doctors, <laughs> I don't know who would do that, but get in there, doctor. Right, shut the door behind you. But uh, those people are exempt, presumably for bus drivers. So all those are exempt loads and you don't have to log anything. 390 to 399 is exempt other than the drug requirements and having a license. Get all your endorsements and always leave yourself an out. Yeah, that's a very good advice, right? Always have somewhere to go uh, in case there's an accident in front of you or whatever. And have your endorsements. Depending on your state, here in Indiana, once you get the doubles, triples, and tanker, you keep it for the rest of your life. So you don't have to worry about that. You saw a driverless truck on I-10. They are running those now. It's Texas is getting into the program with that as well. They've been talking about using those more. It's going to be the South first and it's still years and years away before they start taking anybody's job, really, with this stuff. Look at it. Tesla just had another accident. A Tesla car ran into a police car that was sitting at the side of the road. It just smashed right into it. And the guy was what? Watching a movie. So he's being charged with not driving because it's illegal. But uh, he almost killed everybody. So they are quite a ways away from the thing actually taking over. And it takes a long time for it. The city streets, oh my gosh, they can't even figure that out with a semi yet. It's going to have to have so many cameras on it. All the streets and infrastructure will have to talk to the truck. It is a long way from any of that happening. The tow trucks at the rest stop will be like turning on the kitchen at the iron skillet in the mornings. The roaches are fleeing, the trucks would scatter. It's like turning the light on at uh, Krispy Kreme. <laughs> like, holy mackerel. Yeah, exactly. Right, it's exactly right. And you only got to tow one truck and film it. You know, make sure, make a big deal about it. Other drivers will film it too and post it and be all indignant about it. But don't worry. 
because the message will get out. There'll be some guy to trick guy, yeah, towing this guy's truck. He can just sit in there demand his own business. Right there, they'll post that on all their sites and everything. I'm gonna post this on uh, MySpace. That's I'm gonna put that up there in MySpace. And so other drivers will see it and it will get the message out and these drivers will start moving their trucks because that's the whole goal. Get everybody out of there. There's no reason to sit there, especially if it's such easy parking. Go park. Go park somewhere. Go park next to the guy with his bright lights on while he's sleeping because there's always that truck there, too. Let's go. You should be able to go around and BB gun those things, up too. <laughs> Who was aggravated by that? Oh, my gosh. Talking about the food trucks and iron skittles made me hungry myself. And see what happens? And there's no food trucks at the rest area, so you're stuck going to the iron skillet. You have no choice. Call ahead and have the food ready so you don't have to wait. At least there's that. While you go in the uh, iron skillet. Who uses MySpace? Oh, there's all the older drivers are still on MySpace. Yeah, they have all their music on there. Yeah, MySpace, right? That's the biggest thing, isn't it? MySpace? Don't you have a MySpace page? I thought everybody had MySpace lazy drivers exactly that's all it is don't forget though if you wear it make it a parrot every week always so don't walk don't do this with your headset we just had a driver who got fired okay because he got busted using his headset in his hand okay do not do that they fire you most companies have that policy and they'll fire you for it and you can get a ticket for it as well so he's got to eat that ticket and get a lost his job don't do it headset look have it on speakerphone and do at least that right no touching no touching that anyways. Don't forget about GP Transco if you want to get a good job. Join the Teal Revolution tomorrow, right? Trooper Hoover, September 1st. That's tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, live on Fleet Nav Systems right here on YouTube. There'll be a DOT officer there. You can ask him questions, please. Be somewhat respectful to the guy. He's coming on here of his own volition, right? Which I think is pretty nice of him to do. We got to all work together with him, so... Trooper Hoover will be out there. Cassius King Trucking is going to be live, I'm sure, again today. And uh, that is a great channel with tons of information over there and uh, pretty funny, too. So please check him out. And don't forget about Jay, who's on tomorrow live at 9 p.m. He's on the live a lot. Uh, it's the car shipping channel. Want to know about hauling cars around? Talk to Jay at Auto Transport Intel. The, who's Jay, will you say? Yeah, Jay at Auto Transport Intel. You know who Jay is. Come on, Jay. We all know Jay, but uh, so I'm going to head out and make my company some money, too. And I'm not going to be holding my phone in my hand like a driver did and got fired. I heard about it. I'm like, what? Who still does that? Like, oh, he said he didn't have a headset. I'm like, really? Today, you don't you have to have a headset. Go get a wired headset. Go get something. Mark, is it true that the DOT recordable accident has to include a fatality or someone gets injured or a vehicle has to be towed? That's usually a recordable accident before the it's a dot recordable accident that doesn't mean your company though won't stick you with an accident even if you just scratch another truck that's a different story i'm sticking with aol so i run out of free hours i have uh, i still have some discs here if you uh if you need one and by the way this computer will take a disc so uh, it's still that old absolutely tam l doesn't usually make the live show but here you are well i appreciate it i appreciate it Waving I-65 northbound from mile marker 66. All right, just north of Seymour. Thank you for that. Uh, Van Pris, stay safe. Yes, yeah, another great show. Thank you, Christina. I appreciate you being here. If you wear it, make it a parakeet. Make it something. Look, wear something. You should wear a blue parrot. They're the best. I think that. I wear one. I like them. I think they're great. But please wear some kind of headset. Don't risk a fine and don't risk losing your job for a safety violation. It is not worth it. The driver had been here, I don't know, six years or something, they said crazy crazy not worth it steel horse thank you for your time thank you for coming in and uh, i appreciate the the uh, information that you give to the show so uh, i appreciate you being here believe me michael muller was first the other day and a uh, big nate jobber was here first today so that was pretty good pretty good big nate jobber thanks for coming in today aviator trucker uh, was here today so s isaacs was here Nadaka for the masses. I'm going to try that one more time. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I don't mean to do that. Okay, so no offense intended. Trucker Hershey's here. Thank you for coming in. Justin Poland is here. Chance Irvin. Let's see where am I? Oh, Cash is King Trucking, of course. Please go check him out. Great show over there. So Roy Rodriguez, I appreciate you being here today. So let's see where am I at here? I always lose my spot doing. Oh, Zach. Zach is here. Congratulations. I hope to see you on the road. Bag of donuts. Hello there. Let's see here. Oh, uh, 
Christina, thank you for coming in today. Misty, it's good to see you. Captain Flatbed, what's happening out there? Air Gunner Bob, it's good to see you out here today. But I have to head out to my place here today. Vampris, hello. Rolf Flodo, thank you for coming in. Jerry Albano, Fast Joe Corgan, Chris76, everybody who's here today. Dave Johnson, I appreciate you all coming in. Look, without everybody, I can't do this. So, uh, and that is true, right? The show isn't me. The show's you. The show's not me. I don't do anything, okay? Just like a facilitator. So I do appreciate everybody being here on the show on Mondays. There'll be more trucking answers this week. And um, we'll see you on the next show. Be safe out there. And uh, we'll see you on the road, but not in front of the fuel line at Little America.